Hey everybody, it's JJ and we're back again for another ASUS PC DIY Hardware live stream. Happy Friday. Hopefully everybody is having a uh, positive and productive footing, ending, the, ending out the Wednesday of the week, uh, hopefully on a positive note and uh, getting ready for, of course, the weekend. We've got a lot of things to talk about. Um, there's actually quite a number of actually not only launches, but new products and some exciting things to be able to go into. Got tons of UEFI updates to actually cover. Um, so just as a general recap, what are we going to be talking about? Of course, if you guys haven't checked it out, we recently just did, of course, a full live stream covering of course the latest and greatest RTX 4070 series graphics cards. We'll touch on those for this stream. We're also going to be talking of course about a brand new announcement that we did today which is going to be of course for the brand new series another series of ASUS graphics cards with the ProArt series. We're going to be touching on the brand new Zen screen large format 24 inch uh, MB series monitor uh, the last update to our Thor series of power supplies with the 850 watt P2 rounding out essentially uh, the four series of P2 models that we have from the 1600 watt all the way down now to the 800 150 watt and then we're also going to of course be touching on actually i think we've got like five giveaways um i think something like 80 uefi bios announcements that we're going to be going through or at least giving you guys an update resident to those some awesome promotions that we have on everything from peripherals to motherboards to some graphics cards to routers uh a little bit of all that packed in together and of course as always uh answering any guys as your kinds of questions or comments that you might have so let's get ready to go ahead and jump into it a lot to talk about so let's see who we have joining us here for today H2O Computers, as always, man, fantastic. Thanks for joining us here on the stream. Mike, man, fantastic to have you here. Thank you so much. The one, the only, the master class in builder himself from Canada, Mr. Sneff, man, as always, happy to have you here. Kevin's joining us. Uh, Michael is joining us. Uh, Vitor is also joining us. Hey, the poets, man. Happy to have you, man. Hopefully you're enjoying a Friday. You're going to be jumping in some Star Citizen, huh? I'm assuming yes, right? <laughs> uh, it's probably a given, right? But uh, overall, I think we're doing good. Hey, uh, John, uh, thanks for joining us. Hey, Mr. Matt Lee as well. And I think Erica as well. Also fantastic. Thank you so much for letting us know and always appreciate letting us know that the audio is sounding good as well. So fantastic. Hey, Kenneth, we'll, we'll do one more in there. Uh, fantastic, man. Thanks for joining us here on the stream. All right. Let's Let's get ready to go ahead and jump into it, guys. We've got UEFI BIOS announcements first, because like I said, we've got a pack stream, a lot of things to be able to jump into. So uh, let me go ahead and open up my notes here, and we will get ready to jump into it. Um, now, as always, I do like to go ahead and preface that when we talk about the UEFI BIOS, um, if your system is running you know, smooth without any issues, you don't have any uh, essentially uh, stability problems or anything along those lines, then there's no reason to update your UEFI. Um, essentially for, I'd say, all active chipsets that we have right now, whether you're talking about uh, AM5, AM4, Z790, so socket 1700, um, pretty much all the chipsets we would consider right now at it being a mature life cycle. That means that pretty much the UEFIs are stable, reliable, and uh, very performant. So overall, when we start to release newer and newer UEFI releases, they tend to be very conditional. So it might be specifically incorporating maybe new AGISA from AMD, they could be new memory reference microcode for uh, Intel, um, or it could maybe be specifically addressed a new component in terms of interoperability compatibility. Or take, for instance, most recently on AMD and Intel, uh, we had updates for like non-binary memory, which is the latest generation higher density DDR5 memory kits, uh, such as like 48 gigabyte DIMMs, and that required a UEFI update. But if you're not running non-binary memory, there's no benefit to you. Or another example might be we've done recent enhancements to further fine tune and improve dual rank memory performance and overclocking. But again, if you're not running any dual rank memory configurations, then there's no point to you updating the UEFI. So as always, I do stress and do recommend that, again, if your system is running um, smoothly without any issues, uh, there's no need to update the UEFI. Also do keep in mind, as always, that when you do update your UEFI, you can be changing uh, the underlying auto rules and other parameters. So if you have kind of preset parameters that are working, you could actually have to retune all those new parameters for the new UEFI build. And that's especially the case if there's been a change in things like a GISA or MRC code. So it's important to take a look at uh, the release notes and make sure you're accounting for that if you're updating. But with that, uh, let's go ahead and quickly take a look here at my list. Um, I will post this in the uh, PCDIY group, so there will be a featured announcement post. But you can see right here, we've got quite a number of updates. A large amount of them are going to be for the AM5 platform. So you can see everything from the x670 dash. Uh, dash I, uh, Dash P on the Prime series, uh, B650 series based motherboards, Tough Gaming series based motherboards, as well as the entire Crosshair series of motherboards. These all saw respective updates. I'm going to go ahead and use the Tough Gaming X670E as just my reference again to show you guys what's going on here. So let me go ahead and load this board up and we'll show you what it looks like. 
Uh, for most of you probably that have updated the UEFI, this is gonna seem par for the course and it won't be something that you're surprised by, but I always like to show this process just in case. So how would it go about through? Well, you'd put in your model, uh, you head over to the support tab. Once you head over to the support tab, you're going to head to the drivers and tools tabs, head to the BIOS and firmware, and then from there, you will see that you have that recent update. You can see this update literally just came out yesterday, right? Uh, X670E+, plus. you'll notice that this is what we refer to as a formal release. That means non-beta release. Uh, non-beta releases, it's very important to keep in mind, they are not supported. So it's really uh, for kind of those enthusiast tweakers and tuners and testers out there because it's not an official release that we will support in any capacity. It's really just being put out there for the enthusiast community that want to try out sometimes new builds and things along those lines. We always recommend that if you want formalized support, if you run into an issue running a build, you want to run a formalized release. And then that way you can go ahead and contact our service and support team if you happen to have an issue with a formalized release. Um, you can see right there, right, uh, where we've made enhancements to further improve and maximize performance for X3D series CPUs. So while we already implemented support with the last round of UEFI updates, including a new Agisa, which was optimized for X3D, uh, we are continuing to kind of fine tune and maximize the performance. So if you're somebody that's maybe jumped into one of these latest generation X3D series CPUs, then you're going to want to update that UEFI to be able to take advantage of. As always, too, I do like to note that for those X3D users out there, do keep in mind that enabling Expo, take for instance, or any type of performance tuning is considered overclocking and can effectively void your CPU warranty. Uh, some users don't think that uh, uh, memory overclocking actually does that, but it actually does. It is actually part of the guidelines and uh, stipulated within the actual guidelines for Expo profile support. This is the reason why memory overclocking is not done by default. Uh, the default auto memory rules are much more conservative. Um, and that's a key reason is because they don't actually modify CPU voltage, where if you actually overclock memory, it does overclock what's called your SOC, and you can actually be supplying more voltage to your CPU. So it changes the operating parameters. Um, so again, uh, large number of updates for AM5 based motherboards. There's also though a number of Intel based motherboards that saw respective updates. Um, not that many, there's just a couple I think in the B series that saw respective updates. So the vast majority of those uh, updates that I'm gonna be posting are gonna be for AM5 users, all right? Greg Mason notes is, um, so this is a great point, and people that watch my stream, um, I'm going to go ahead and help to clarify um, some maybe some confusion for Greg because you might not actually have an understanding of the way that the platform or the technology works. So Greg makes a note to say, hey, can you fix the BIOS so I can run four sticks with XMP enabled? Uh, this is a known problem. It's not a known problem because there are no four DIM XMP kits. Uh, it's a falsehood to actually assume that you can run a four DIM configuration. Almost all memory kits on the market are actually two DIM kits, and the XMP profile file when it's defined it is specifically defined for a certain density and a certain rank and a certain population so when you take actually a two dim kit take for instance the profile has been specifically tuned for two dims not for four dims now can you attempt to force a xmp profile for four dims yes you can but critically the other thing that you might not really be aware of is actually understanding the way that the memory controller works. Now, I'm not gonna to go too much into this because it's a topic that I've covered at length within our PCDI group, and I recommend that um, you actually check out uh, a post that we have in our PCDIY group um, that's called DDR5 Insights Posts. Um, but let me see if I can go ahead and bring up this um, image right here. Uh, I think I have one for probably the older Intel platform, uh, but it will apply, it doesn't really matter here. So. Uh, give me a second here. So this is uh, what's referred to as the Intel port table. And so Greg, uh, you might not be aware of this, but if you actually take a look at the way that the memory controller works, even at a default configuration, you actually can see right here, uh, the, the way that the actual memory works is in a one SPC and one DPC and one rank, so single rank, so that's commonly like 16 or 32 gigabytes worth of memory. Okay, you can see that it operates at 4,800. On 13th gen series CPUs, that actually would be faster, it would be 5,600. But you can notice that actually some users think, hey, I'm running these four DIMMs, um, higher density memory configuration, why can't it even run at this speed? Well, you can actually see that as you increase slots per channel, DIMMs per channel in the rank, the actual even official memory speed goes down, and that's because the memory controller cannot run running at that speed. Any of those parameters above that is actually an overclock configuration. Um, so now when we bring this all together, it is very important to know, well, what are you running? You don't make note in terms of what you're actually running, but take for instance, if you're running, I don't know, maybe you bought like a 
four sticks of 6600 MT, that's gonna be really stressful to the memory controller and it's not a realistic target. While 6600 MT, it's pretty easy to achieve uh, without any issues. Um, with a two DIMM configuration on not only actually uh, Z690, but Z790, but 12th gen and even 13th gen series CPUs. But under a four DIMM configuration, that DRAM scaling will go down. It becomes much more conservative. So you have to actually align the correct expectation for what you're attempting to target. Uh, four DIMM configurations, usually the max, it's probably gonna be somewhere at or around 5,600 to about 6,000 MT. Higher speeds than that could be possible, but they start to get more conditional depending on the quality of your CPU and other factors. Um, and similarly, the value for let's say a two DIMM configuration on their single rank, not dual rank, can easily be 7,000 MT or greater. But even going with two DIMMs and then going with dual rank tank, for instance, which would be a higher density, 64 gigs versus 32 gigs, you'd actually bring that ceiling down. So. There's actually a lot to understand. Hopefully that's given you some insight into better understanding the way that actually XMP really works and the factors that go into it. And I'd strongly recommend if you want, again, a more complete understanding, watch our deep dive DDR5 live stream that we've covered uh, on our YouTube channel and also check out the DDR5 insights post, okay? All right, um, with that, let's go ahead and Jason, no, uh, so that's actually a good question. I'm gonna answer just this one more question on that before we go that, just cause we do have a lot to go on. So uh, again, I have covered this actually in different posts, but why do motherboards have four slots RAM um, if you don't support four sticks? So the, again, the phrasing is important here. You stating don't, doesn't support four sticks is not the correct way to state it. Can you run four DIMMs? Yes, I can actually show you right now uh, my motherboard running four DIMMs. If you go back and watch prior streams, you'll see that I've got my Z690 system running. I've benchmarked, I've live demoed four DIMM configurations. We have user running four DIMM configurations. Support does not mean the same thing as overclocked configurations, right? So if you wanna run four DIMM configurations, can you? 100%, yes, but you have to align them with the correct expectation of what is possible relative to a four DIMM configuration. And that's always gonna be lower than a two DIMM configuration. So if you care about speed, you're gonna to wanna to go with two DIMMs. If you care about density, then you wanna go with four DIMMs. But even then, the there is a little bit to consider, right? DDR5 supports larger density, right? You can get 48 or even 62 gigs in two DIMMs. So why would you necessarily wanna sacrifice the speed that you could have with a two DIMM configuration with a four DIMM? Some users, purely just like the aesthetic. There are people that just want four dims and they want it to look all lit up. That's entirely fine, but you will sacrifice scaling. You will literally run at a lower speed uh, just because of what I've indicated to you there within the architecture and the design. This is not limited to Intel. It's also applicable on AMD. And it actually, it's not even new to DDR5. DDR4 exactly was the same. DDR3 was exactly the same. And DDR2 was exactly the same. Density is always going to limit frequency. The more density you have, the more rank you have, the harder it will be to reach faster and faster speeds. All right, uh, with that covered, uh, let's go into our next topic here, which is gonna be some giveaways. We've got a lot of giveaways uh, to jump into, guys. There's literally a huge amount of uh, giveaways that we have actually going on. So I'm gonna try to go fairly quickly through these, but there's some pretty exciting stuff that we do have going on resident to all of our giveaways. So uh, let me go ahead and open up my corresponding links here for our giveaways. Give me one sec here. Head over to the correct tab. And again, anybody that has any questions on this, uh, feel free. Again, I have a DDR5 Insights post that I spent a lot of time uh, actually detailing information out. There's actually proof of concepts there that are all detailed with screenshots, validation information. Um, and like I said, there's also links to videos that we have that are on our YouTube channel where we've done great discussions with partners like Kingston and Crucial to help you better understand DDR5 and architecture, okay? All right, um, so let's go ahead and uh, take a look here at some of our giveaways that we have going on. Right. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, did I miss them here? Oh, okay, yep, I have them right here, sorry. <laughs> All right, uh, let's go with our first giveaway here. Uh, first giveaway is gonna still be our current Get Tough Game Tough promotion. So uh, for those of you pretty much aware, we have our Tough Gaming series of products. This is gonna cover now a pretty comprehensive lineup. We have everything from Tough Gaming monitors to power supplies to fans to AI coolers, keyboards, mice, motherboards, graphics cards, chassis, just about almost every component within our lineup we now have also existing within Tough Gaming. So Tough Gaming is our entry to our gaming line. 
really a great uh, option for users that maybe on a more limited budget that don't want to compromise on quality, really have a solid set of features and functions and specifications. They've got a really nice, clean, minimal design language as well. So I'm definitely a big fan of our Tough Gaming series. And to ce celebrate some of our latest generation products and the Tufts Gaming series, we're doing actually a worldwide giveaway. So if you guys are checking us out for some other places outside of North America, get in on this giveaway. You've got 12 days. Uh, left here, yeah, 12 days left, and you can see you can win everything from a 3900K processor to uh, we're giving away motherboards, we're giving away two 4070 Ti based graphics cards, a uh, cooler, our latest generation ATX 3.0 based power supply, HDMI, high refresh rate gaming monitor, uh, HDMI 2.1 high refresh rate gaming monitor, the GT502, one of my absolute favorite chassis that we have, and then our new Tough Gaming um, M3 Gen 2 uh, Ultra Light Mouse, as well as our Tough Gaming H1 wireless headset. Let's see. USB-C 2.4 gigahertz wireless headset. So a really cool giveaway. I'm going to go ahead and drop that in the chat there, and you can guys can get in on that guy. All right. All right, next up, let's see uh, the next giveaway. Uh, next giveaway that we do have going on is we actually have a giveaway for this beautiful graphics card right here, this RTX uh, 4070. So brand new yesterday, if you guys, and we'll talk about this a little bit, of course, when we talk about our graphics cards, but we did talk about essentially that uh, we finally introduced the dual series for the 40 series. So up to this point, we only had, of course, the ROG Strix series, we had the Noctua series, and we had the Tough Gaming series, but now we have the Dual series. And one of the really great things about the Dual series for the 4070 is gonna be, it's a really compact uh, design, but it doesn't compromise on cooling performance, uh, very, very good cooling performance, and really nice acoustics in a very compact profile. Here, you're only looking at a card that is literally about 2.55 uh, in terms of its actual slot, so significantly more compact uh, than you're gonna have with the larger cards, and you have the chance to win one. So what do you gotta do? Well, it's pretty straightforward. Um, all you need to do is just get in on the giveaway, um, which is pretty much just checking out our actual live stream. So we did have a live stream yesterday, and it has actually two secret codes, so you have to actually watch the live stream to get the codes, enter in those codes, and also check out our unboxing um, that we also have on the ASUS graphics card YouTube channel. That's different than our ASUS North America channel, okay? And you can see that you've got the opportunity to be able to go ahead and get some entries and win there. So uh, do that, get in on it, and get the chance to win a great graphics card. And like I said, this white graphics card, uh, it's pretty sweet, it looks really, really nice, all right? Let me go ahead and drop that one in there. All right, uh, so let's let's go to the next one. Uh, we then have our friends over at CLX. Uh, so CLX is uh, one of our, what's called Powered by ASUS partners. Uh, so that means that they're essentially a system integrator and they work with us to integrate a lot of our core components to be able to, of course, be able to sell you a pre-built system, um, which of course is leveraging their experience and their expertise to be able to provide you a great gaming platform. I'm actually a big fan of uh, pre-builds from system integrators because of course they are all put together. Everything works entirely great. And then it's still something that over time, if you decide you want to be able to customize and upgrade and kind of tweak and tune yourself, the great thing is that you can still do that because they're using the standard same components that you would be using if you were building your system. So uh, of course, you know, for probably most of you, you guys build your own systems, but for some of you that are interested, uh, of course, and maybe that little bit more of a turnkey experience, but having the performance and the features of having a pre-build, uh, this is a great option. And it's really cool to be able to work with a partner to be able to actually give away a whole system. So this is a really nice high-end system that we've got right here. You can see it's featuring some sweet hardware, including an ROG Strix-based motherboard and a tough gaming-based graphics card. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and get you guys in the link right here for this guy as well. So let me go ahead and open that one up here. Give me one second right here. And uh, I'm also gonna show you guys the details. So you can see right here, what do we got going on? This is gonna be a, for a uh, Core i7-13700 uh, series processor uh, with an ROG Prime, actually. Um, the picture there is for a Strix, but they note here that it's a Prime, Prime Z7-A, which is still one of our white. It's actually this exact motherboard right here next to me. That's literally the Prime-based motherboard. Um, 32 gigabytes of Kingston DDR5 memory, 5600 MT, a one terabyte drive, another four terabyte 
HDD, so a mechanical hard drive, then a 3070 Ti or tough gaming based graphics cards that's all inside of a really beautiful chassis from our friends over at Fantex. Um, you then also have that CLX custom paint that they've done. It's a lavender paint. It's subtle. It's really classy. I really love it. It's just a little bit of that light iridescent um, kind of purple vibe. Has a nice little hue to it that's pretty cool. And a thousand watt power supply along with, of course, uh, a full operating system license. So pretty sweet. If you guys want to get in on it, I think you have until, when is it? Until the end of April. So end of April if you want to get in on that giveaway. All right. Let me go ahead and drop that one in there, okay? As always, too, depending on where you're located, please keep in mind to look at the terms and conditions. Terms and conditions can make regional restrictions, so sometimes some giveaways are not always applicable in every single place, so do keep that in mind, all right, guys? Uh, but we're still not done. We've got more giveaways. Uh, we've got another secret egg quest uh, with ASUS AM5 based motherboards. This one's a pretty cool and kind of crazy one. Uh, it's pretty interesting. So what do you guys need to do? Well, you need to head over essentially two different product pages. And if you head over to these different product pages, you might find these little eggs. So you can see actually right here um, that here in the bundled uh, Hyper M.2 adapter, or you can see right here when you're taking a closer look at the fan headers, you might see this little egg, right? Well, if you can find all of the corresponding eggs these essentially add to entries that you have now there are different ways that you can go ahead and enter in to ultimately be able to win um, and what are you able to win well you can see you can get a tough gaming a 7900 XTX based graphics cards that's absolutely one of the best graphics cards you can get on the market and our tough gaming XTX card that 7900 XTX it's cool it's quiet and it's fast it's an awesome card uh, then you can also win the ROG Crosshair X670E Hero it's pretty much the benchmark for AM5 based motherboards, the latest 7950 uh, X3D series CPU, and then in tier three, an ROG Delta S headset, an Azoth keyboard, which is our flagship, you know, super premium uh, keyboard. That's a $250 keyboard. And then as well as our ultra, uh, ultra light flagship gaming mouse with the Harp Ace, which again, it's a $150 mouse. It's an absolutely uh, supreme mouse in terms of its specifications, super ultra lightweight, special new biopolymer design, really, really cool mouse. You've got some awesome opportunity to win a ton of hardware right there, right? So again, what do you have to do? Just follow the entry mechanisms, get in on it, um, and you guys are gonna be good to go, okay? So let me go ahead and drop that one in the chat there for you as well. All right, and then next up, uh, we're still not done. We still we still got more giveaways, right? You know, it's it's always it's always interesting. We always get a lot of people that are always asking for it, and then sometimes people, when we do have them all, they don't even enter into all of them. So take advantage of them, okay? Um, this one is going to be the Spellcraft Public Gata. Um, it's going on right here. So you can see actually from, again, another actually PBA partner, Zydax is another PBA partner who builds premium custom built gaming centric PCs. And here we've got an awesome gaming system that has been put together by Zydax. So you can see 13900K, okay? Uh, then with a Tough Gaming RTX 4080 overclocked edition graphics card, our flagship series Maximus Z790 Hero based motherboard. And then speaking of memory, right? You got some 64 gigs, okay, of uh, uh, G Skill. What is it? Yeah, G Skill uh, 6000 MT memory. That's a beastly kit of memory. So super dense and a high speed kit of memory. An SN850X M.2 SSD, two terabytes. And that's all inside that beautiful Leviathan Infinity Black chassis. I mean, what more could you ask for? I mean, that's pretty much like a top of the line gaming system and it looks it looks great, right? So you've got the opportunity to win that guy as well, okay? So make sure to get in on it there as well. So uh, let me go ahead and link that one there in the chat for you guys. Uh, Teffen's asking, are there any limited edition anime uh, themed GPUs from ASUS for the 4070? No, we have not done any. So uh, the last essentially kind of a limited uh, uh, anime themed was going to be, of course, the Demon Slayer series. Uh, that's the last one. And then prior to that, we, of course, had the Evangelion and the Gundam edition, but we haven't done anything yet uh, beyond that. As always, though, if we have any new IP collaborations that might be announced, rest assured that we'll talk about in our PCDIY group or talk about in the weekly stream. But IP collaborations, they're very sensitive and 
confidential, so we can't give you any heads up if we may or may not be working on them. So as always, make sure to keep it tuned, all right? Um, so that gets you covered there, all right? Now, last but not least, we've got just one more giveaway here to cover. So again, a lot of giveaways, guys. Uh, great opportunity. This one is exclusive to our friends over in Canada. So okay, if you're Canadian, we got you covered. If you're in the US, sorry. All those other giveaways though, for the most part, are pretty much gonna be covered for you. And a lot of the giveaways are generally, uh, usually US focused, right? And sometimes also cover our friends over in Canada. But this one is just for our friends in Canada. So here, uh, it's something that's been co-done with Best Buy and it's actually for our GT6. Our GT6 is our brand new, uh, kind of like flagship mesh networking product. Um, it's really been designed for users that really want a very high performance uh, level of kind of Wi-Fi coverage. Um, with mesh, that's really its big strong suit. So if you're in an environment where you're talking about, you know, uh, probably 2,800, 3,000, 3,500 square feet, larger type environments, multi-story homes, you want to cover your indoors and your outdoor spaces, right? Um, and you want it to look cool. The GT6 is a fantastic option. It comes in white, comes in black, also supports multi-gigabit ISP-based service with 2.5 gigabit support. But instead of buying one, you can win one. So follow the actual blog, read through it, uh, provide the actual entry mechanism right here, which uh, asks you to do a couple of little things right there to be able to get on it. And you've got until the 23rd to be able to win uh, this awesome GT6 uh, based ROG mesh networking product. Okay, so if you guys want to get in on that, make sure to do that. So let me go ahead and drop that one in the chat. And uh, just in case anybody wants to see a little bit of an image a little bit more clearly, clearly here of the GT6, this is actually what it looks like. It's really cool. It even has RGB lighting. You can, of course, turn that off if you want. Um, but it is a really slick, very, very high performance uh, based router. Okay, so pretty sweet. So that is going to be the GT6. All right. Let me go ahead and drop that one in the chat there. I like that. Uh, Michael notes, uh, wow, Canada gets one. <laughs> there you go. Um, we have a question, when will the ROG 1600 watt PSU be available? We have actually already gone ahead and released that in terms of actually channel availability. So channel availability always varies a little bit between channel partners. Um, it's hard to kind of give you a concrete timeline because essentially once we release it from distribution uh, or to distribution, it can really vary depending on the logistics of different partners. So sometimes we'll release something out to distribution. Take for instance, in Newegg, we'll have that up within like five to seven days, but Amazon could literally take a month right before it actually lists the product. So it can vary. Um, so the launch for the 1600 was ready a little bit ago. So I would expect, um, you know, probably in, in the short period to probably start seeing popping it up from a little bit more e-tailers. Um, if you want, it's a little bit difficult. I can try to see if we can coordinate coordinate with our account manager and see if they can give us some visibility on whether or not we might see any partners maybe listed in the immediate kind of foreseeable future. Um, and I can also, of course, check with our ASUS store team if we have any internal inventory that we might list on our ASUS store. We do generally try to prioritize, though, our, our inventory for our channel partners. That means while we definitely uh, list products on our ASUS store, we try to maximize the majority of our inventory to, you know, Newegg, Micro Center, um, you know, Best Buy, Amazon, whoever might be our channel partners is where we're going to put the majority of our inventory focus, okay? But feel free, tag me in the PCDIY group, or you can email me at PC DIY at asus.com. Okay. All right. That takes care of our giveaways. Woo. A lot of giveaways, guys. Um, let's see. Quick question right here. Is there any chance for a KO version of the RTX 47? Never say never. Um, I think right now we don't have any immediate plans for the KO development. Um, right now, you know, our focus, I think for the 4070 is we think that the dual series hits a really strong balance in terms of kind of its features, functions, dimensions, and also price point. Um, there is maybe a little bit of room, right? Because, you know, of course, with the, the KO, the reason why we designed and developed was to have something that had a little bit more RGB lighting, um, as opposed to, you know, in the prior generation, you might have to go into like Strix or something along those lines. But here, the thing is that we already have the Tough Gaming model, and the Tough Gaming model does have that RGB lighting, right? So the question is, really, is there kind of some space in between kind of tough gaming and uh, dual to justify coming in and putting in a KO based model, right? And that's something that I think we would really have to evaluate it. And we would have to kind of see enough feedback demand to say that it would justify actually putting out um, that model, okay? All right, let me quickly see if there's any other quick questions that might've popped up in there. Uh, 
Okay, um, I think that's it. And again, if I missed your questions earlier, I know there were some other questions that kind of came in for some other points. Feel free to go ahead and drop those into the chat. I do my best to go ahead and get through them as we as we can as we're kind of going through uh, the, the stream, right? Okay, um, so with that, let's get ready to go into our next uh, set of items right here. Um, I do want to go ahead and also touch on, where is it? We do have the launch of our course, our Creator Awards. Uh, that are going on as well. So I do like to just give a notice that this is now something that we've actually done for a couple of years. Um, so it's pretty cool. So we have our ASUS Pro Artist uh, Pro Artist Awards, and these are, it's a pretty big giveaway. And so essentially, if you know of any creators or you yourself are a creator, um, there's actually a wide number of I can see entry fields that are available to you. Um, you have the opportunity to actually uh, submit and be able to actually win some uh, some really cool pricing. So you can actually see that there's entries here for photography, for graphic design, for film, and for animation. And there's, of course, subsets that exist within that. So in photography, of course, you could be into portraiture, you could be into nature, street, landscape. There's a lot of variation right there, right? Um, um, and then right here, you can see in terms of the pricing, uh, just like the last time, this is a really big prize pool, um, over $100,000 in terms of the total relative value, right? You can see that actually $60,000 in terms of cash, uh, a lot of ASUS Pro Art products. So these are some of the absolute best products in the industry from, you know, our, of course, really premium ASUS Pro Art monitors to motherboards to our PD5 systems to, of course, our uh, Pro Art series of laptops um, to now, of course, even coming in the not too distant future, our Pro Art series of graphics cards. And we'll even have more Pro Art products products coming later in 2023. So uh, again, I'm going to go ahead and drop the link in the chat. I'm not going to spend too much time on it. But again, if you are a creator or you know any creators or you want to share this out there, we'd love for you to be able to share that out there. And we'd love to be able to have the, uh, the individuals in the community to be able to take advantage of it. Um, hey, Michael. Uh, so I was asking about the GR. Sorry, let me see right here. I'm not exactly sure what you mean in terms of the component. If you could maybe either tag me again in the group or send me an email with maybe like a clear picture. We don't generally stock usually a lot of the accessories. So the best thing is if you're looking for like a specific part or component that might be resident to the chassis, um, reach out to the service and support team and then they would have to inquire internally to see if it's actually something that we have stocked relative to service and support inventory. So that's the best thing that I can recommend to you. Um, if you're talking about like on a replacement accessory or a certain piece within the chassis, uh, regardless of whatever might happen with it, just reach out to our service and support team and, and provide some feedback. Um, and again, like I said, if you want to provide me some more clarity and more some context, uh, if you email me or tag me in the group and show me a picture, that, that would be helpful. Um, I think in your situation, though, it's probably not a point to have to post it directly. You could probably just email me, uh, pcdiy at asus.com. Okay. All right. Uh, that takes care of us there in terms of the Asus Pro Art Awards. All right, guys, let's go ahead and jump into some of the actual new products that we've got going on and we'll go from there. Um, before we actually get into the straight new products, though, I do want to go ahead and actually talk about uh, a new addition to our product line, which is going to be the Asus Pro Art graphics cards. So um, many of you, if you guys are not aware, let's go ahead and do a little bit of coverage right here. This is what our current essentially um, Asus graphics card looks like. Um, so this is pretty much current as of just about yesterday, day before yesterday when the 40 series launched. And on the highest end side of the fence, we have our ROG Strix series. This could also potentially pivot into including like ROG Strix LC, which is like an offshoot model, which is, uh, includes our like AIO integrated based solutions. It wouldn't though account for maybe specialized models as at this time we don't have any what we refer to as formal ROG products, uh, such as cards like the Poseidon or the Matrix series models, which you never know uh, if they may be potentially be reintroduced, but at this time, they're not part of an active series of development. But uh, when we're taking a look at our active series of development, we have RG Strix, those are the highest end series. So that's like 4090, 4080, 4070 Ti base graphics cards. And we'll go down generally into about the enthusiast mid range. You will generally not find, well, excuse me, not generally, but you will not find ROG Strix uh, graphics cards in the, let's say the, the, the most mid-range and the most entry-level series of base graphics cards. We then have our tough gaming series of graphics cards, which similarly ride usually about the same level as the, of course, RG Strix, but will drop down to even a little bit more entry-level based solutions. We have recent new series like the Noctua, which for this generation is so far exclusive to just the 4080. And then we have the dual series, and the dual series don't go all the way up into the highest end models. Uh, they generally exist in the mid-range of the, the kind of the segment. And so that's why we have now the dual for the 
4070. We then, as somebody asked about, we have the KO, which is still an active model within the kind of the mid range. So you see like 3060 class type, type KO based products. And then we have Phoenix, which is again in that kind of entry, very compact because the Phoenix series are just a single fan. So you see models like something like a 1660, 1650, 3050 class GPUs, things along those lines. And then we have our just Asus graphics cards or maybe S Asus SL, and that would be silent. Um, and some of these cards can be very, very compact, um, very entry level in terms of the GPU configuration. So think something like, you know, a GT 710, GT 720, GT 740, something like that, right? Um, but maybe have special design approaches. So examples like this is a quad HDMI single slot passively cooled card, right? There's no fans. If you just want a card to give you a lot of display output, slot it into a slot, hey, it's going to be good to go. So that's our, our all of our series, but we now have a new series that we're adding into the mix. And what is that going to be? Well, let's go ahead and take a look at it. Give me one second here and uh, we'll load it up. So it is going to be this guy right here, uh, the brand new ProArt base series graphics card. I've gone ahead and put it right here next to one of our beautiful ProArt series base motherboards. Uh, the This is specifically the Crater, the B760D4 version. Uh, I love this kind of pairing configuration because I think for a lot of maybe creators, uh, they are not necessarily gonna be as focused at kind of maybe jumping into kind of overclocking or kind of heavy performance tuning, or though, though there can definitely be benefits for it. And we do have Z series and X series based uh, ProArt based motherboards that do support that functionality. Um, but you can see how nicely they complement that. So what was kind of the design intent? What was the point of designing and developing the ProArt based graphics cards? And the big focus for us internally was one, to be able to offer a card that had a more compact based design, a slimmer profile. So one of the big things you're gonna be seeing within this graphics card generation for uh, the ProArt series is going to be a much smaller design. So this is gonna be 2.5 slots. And then if we take a look at the actual GPU length, uh, this is not to scale, it's just a general reference in terms of an image, but we can see right here, if we take a look at the length of the graphics cards, it's quite different. So the RG Strix card, 357 millimeters, the Tough Gaming graphics card is 348 millimeters, and then you can see that ProArt graphics card is really quite a bit more compact at 300 millimeters, right? This allows it to really fit uh, a much larger range of chassis, including small form factor and medium form factor, or maybe OEM systems. So, you know, there are people out there that maybe they built a system or they bought a system and it's a more basic chassis and they need that ease of access in terms of being able to have it installed in that system. And, you know, something like this Tough Gaming graphics card and these Strix cards, they're great. They're really good in terms of their cooling performance. They're really quiet and they have a number of nice upgrades, but they are definitely gonna be limited because you, you're gonna need a bigger chassis. And the DIY kit, it's not an issue. I mean, you can find literally entry-level chassis that are $100 that can fit these cards without any problem. But as you look at the broadest level of the market, it can become more challenging. And that's where we're trying to provide here the, the, the benefit within the ProArt model, right? Um, you're also going to see a difference in terms of the actual dimensions. So when we talk about the actual dimensions for the card, uh, there's going to be a quite of a difference there. So when we take a look at the actual dimensions, um, you're going to be looking at that the Tough Gaming based graphics card is going to be coming in, excuse me, the uh, ProArt series based graphics card is going to be coming in at essentially 2.55 uh, slots, right? And that is going to be quite a bit different, right? So if we take a look here, um, let's go to our little bit of our write-up. And I have this here in my kind of write-up. And again, if you guys are part of our PC Hour group, you'll see all this great information. But in the write-up, you know, hey, the Noctua, it's a 4.3 slot. Tough Gaming is a 3.65 slot. The RG Strix is a 3.5 slot. And the ProArt is a 2.5 slot, right? So it is not only shorter, but it's a much more compact base design. So all the way around, it's definitely a nice uh, improvement in that respect. So here you can see... This is uh, the graphics card. It's got a really nice ID design. It complements, again, like I said, our ProArt series-based products. Nice vented backplate. You still have, of course, those axial take base fans with the ring barrier, which gives you nice optim uh, optimized static pressure dual ball bearing based design. We don't have all the specifications to give you guys as of yet, um, but you can expect a lot of the kind of standard things that you would know from Asus graphics cards built using the Asus Auto Extreme production process. Our GPU guard bonding technology, which I'll talk a little bit about. Some people don't even know about that feature. It's a really cool feature that um, is 
pretty much I think exclusive to us to still currently in terms of our uh, graphics card design. Um, so a very, very cool design. And this exists for both the 4080 and for the 4070 Ti in terms of current models that we're gonna be looking at. Um, we may expand that in the future, but as of right now, that is going to be the current models that we have for the Asus ProArt series-based graphics cards. So um, we'll have more details coming out in the future, you know, regarding like the pricing and everything like that. But this kind of aligns just right now with NAB. Um, so NAB is one of the biggest kind of uh, shows, uh, especially for kind of creators and professionals that are out there in a specific fields. And so uh, we just kind of want to be able to kind of bring this to visibility and let people know that are about it, right? Uh, Strix is longer than that 4070 Ti. Yes, so both the ROG Strix card and the Tough Gaming card would be longer than the ProArt based graphics card um, and by a considerable margin. The only card that's actually kind of close to the ProArt cards is the Noctua, but the Noctua is also the thickest or the largest card in terms of the number of slots, right? So it's a 4.3 slot, but it's 310. So it's, it's really what some people refer to as chonky, right? It's, you know, um, it's going to be quite short actually, but it's gonna be really, really thick. So it's gonna take a huge amount of space in terms of your motherboard. Um, and then with this card, you can actually still have a lot of access to additional slots. So especially for the creative field, we see some users that actually do use dual GPUs, like maybe they're in DaVinci Resolve and they're using actually a secondary card for acceleration purposes, um, or you see them in different um, fields, right? Uh, for in, in, in professional fields where they might be using the GPU. So there can be merit to actually having this type of configuration, having a more compact base design, where while in the gaming segment, nobody is actively doing NVLink or essentially SLI configurations because it's no longer supported, okay? Uh, um, somebody asking about the SQ7. Yeah, SQ7 is an ROG based SSD. We have not yet released or brought that into the North American market. Um, and of course we are currently working on our Gen 5 based SSD, which I can tell you is gonna be amazing. So make sure to keep it tuned in the future if you're interested in that. Uh, but I don't have any details to do that. Um, if you wanna find more about the SQ7 though, you can go back and search in our YouTube feed. I did cover it um, as a product, even though we didn't bring it into North America, okay? All right, uh, some people giving some feedback there is uh, really like the compact base design. And then uh, Alex, I'll be talking about the dual series, including the white models in a little bit. So don't worry, I'll be touching that just on a little bit, okay? So again, overall guys, uh, hopefully yeah, you find this interesting. I think it's a pretty cool addition on a really nice option that we're gonna be essentially giving you. And I am, for most of you, probably already aware, um, in my post, I write a little bit about, of course, the NVIDIA Studio drivers. That essentially is an auxiliary set of a driver suite, which is designed for ISV or essentially professional applications to get a benefit of not only um, like enhanced stability, um, but specialized maybe uh, application performance or acceleration within, you know, something like Adobe Creative Cloud or DaVinci Resolve or AutoCAD or Blender or Maya, uh, different types of applications. But you can still, at first, you know, if you wanted to essentially use a ProArt card as a gaming card, it's 100% entirely fine. It's the same GPU that you would be using within a tough graf graphics card or the same GPU that's present in the ROG Strix card. So you would just use the game ready drivers as opposed to the studio drivers, right? So NVIDIA does offer both of these drivers and it's up to you based on your usage and your workflow to pick the driver that works best for you, okay? So hopefully that is clear because um, I did have, I think I had like one or two questions. People's like, can I use this card for gaming, right? And yes, of course you can use this graphics card for gaming. All right, um, let's go ahead and go into our next product here. We're gonna keep it here on the graphics cards, guys. So let's get ready to go ahead and uh, touch on some new GPUs. So the 4070, so the 4070, of course, is the latest mid-range enthusiast-based graphics card. Sits below, of course, the 4070 Ti. Um, it's actually, I think, a really great option that's available now, especially, I think, at its price point. Um, you're not you're not only getting a card that can offer, you know, pretty close performance to what you're seeing in traditional raster to the 3080, but, of course, with things like DLSS 3, of course, enhanced RTX performance, an AV1 encode and decode engine, right? Um, significantly better power efficiency see um, this is a fantastic card I think for upgraders and for new builders alike so if you're coming over from like a 10 series a 20 series card or even something older this is a fantastic option to be able to pivot into to really be able to give you I think a great 
performance, uh, level of performance, whether you're talking about high refresh rate at 1080, high refresh rate at 1440p, and even actually quite a number of games at 4K. And that's even before you start to introduce the benefits that DLSS 3 or DLSS 2 can offer you relative to how you can, of course, um, be able to provide a smoother gameplay experience. But let's go ahead and take a look at the cards that we have um, launched for the, 47, uh, for the 4070. And then I will specifically get into the models that we have as part of our launch, okay? So as a quick recap, we've got the dual uh, 4070, which will be in black. Um, this is going to be exactly like the white model. These are going to be the most compact cards. Very cool, very quiet. Um, I will give you a couple of cool design notes in terms of how they benefit you compared to even something like the FE card. I'll tell you right now, our card is already cooler and quieter than the FE and does feature a higher quality VRM at essentially the same price point. So for me, um, I think if you're looking for a card that's compact, power efficient, um, and you know reasonable in terms of the price point and looks really nice, the Dual is going to be a fantastic option for you. Um, so this card doesn't have any RGB lighting, so do keep that in mind if you care about RGB lighting. Uh, it doesn't have any. Um, I really love this clean profile. It also does not utilize the 12 volt high power connector. Um, it utilizes the legacy 8 pin PCI Express power connector. Um, this is more than enough for the power envelope the card utilizes. Um, so the max power envelope is essentially 220, 216 watt approximately is the max power limit that you can customize on the card. That's in alignment with essentially the max power for the PCI Express power connector. But the great thing is, is that if you've got an older power supply, you don't have that new cable, you don't have to worry about it. It's fully compatible, drop it in there, you're good to go. And the real max usage in terms of the power draw that you see for something in this class, it's probably around 180-ish watts um, in or around that kind of target. So it's actually quite nice. If you compare that to like a 3070 um, or something similar, it's actually almost like 100 watts more. So um, even just in the prior generation, which is pretty reasonable, uh, the transient, the, the peak power spikes were higher and also the overall power consumption, even nominally for just gaming, was actually much more as well. So you not only get a more compact card, a cooler card, but you also even get better performance. So pretty cool. Um, metal backplate. This shroud is plastic, and as I noted, no RGB lighting. Uh, second in that is that we offer pretty much the same exact model, but we also have a white variant. So pick the card that works great for you. Uh, we essentially have the white variant, and there's no difference. Uh, we'll have a standard model, and we'll have an overclocked model, okay? And same exact details that I just ran over in terms of the black um, dual card. We then will be coming out a little bit later with the ROG Strix version of this. Now, this is not the same cooler. There's some people that think that the coolers are just taken from like a 4090 and we put it on a, a 4070 Ti or, um, um, you know, a, a 4070. And it doesn't work that way. The actual coolers get redesigned and reconfigured to be in alignment with the power envelope and not only the positioning of the card. So um, the while it looks very similar to, uh, you know, the 4080 or the 4090, the thermal design, while it will be the best of all of the 4070s that we offer because it's the RG Strix model, it's not the same thermal solution. It's entirely different. Um, but again, the benefit that you're going to want with the RG Strix card is it will have the um, 12 volt high power connector. So it will have also a higher uh, TGP and it will have a higher power max limit. It will have the course the most performant VRM design. It'll have the fan connect two headers. It has the most RGB lighting with the, not only the side RGB lighting profile, but of course the 360 degree tail light. And it has that premium all metal shroud, which is just kind of next level in terms of its performance. Um, but we'll have more details for specifically for the RG Strix model when it comes out a little bit later. Um, and then we have the Tough Gaming model, which is launching right now alongside the Dual model. So both the Tough Gaming and the Dual model are available right now. Um, the Tough Gaming model is going to give you quite a number of upgrades, and I'll talk about where those upgrades exist in a second. But this gives you a full metal shroud and a full metal backplate. And unlike some competitors, we actually also have thermal pads that exist for the backplate making contact with the PCB. It's not super critical because it's not like you have memory there, but it does provide you a little bit of kind of secondary thermal dissipation. Has a uh, really, really nice uh, ribbing design, which helps to give you really nice rigidity and stability in the card. And I think the, the Tough Gaming graphics cards absolutely fa look fantastic. If you like clean, simple designs, Tough Gaming is great here. And even though you have those two RGB lighting zones, of course, you can disable that if you don't want any RGB lighting and you're good to go. So in total, we've got four different models but three series. So a dual, Tough Gaming, and ROG Strix. And if you just kind of want to see what they kind of might look like a little bit next to the boards, let's go ahead and kind of just give you a sense of kind of like ID design between them. So here you can see 
the Prime series. It looks great with these dual cards. They really, really kind of have a harmonious kind of look and feel. Um, you could also easily pair this up with something like one of our RG Strix motherboards. It would look really, really nice. Okay. Hey, A's Jeep. Happy to have you here, man. Thanks for joining us here on the stream. Um, the RG Strix cards, of course, I think would pair really well with an RG Strix based graphics card. And again, none of theirs, these are like hardware locked. Most of you all know that these are just PCI Express cards. So if you want to put a Strix card with a prime motherboard, do it. It doesn't matter. You can mix and match any configuration you want. These are just kind of some visual pairings. Uh, the Pro Art series, I think also complements really nicely with the dual series in black, especially because also, again, the Pro Art models don't have any RGB and the dual model doesn't have any RGB. GB as well, right? And then the Tough Gaming, of course, I think looks great with the Tough Gaming based graphics cards. So uh, overall, you can see how some of the models line up kind of to position well within this, okay? So what do you get um, if you head over and let's say maybe you decide to kind of buy the, um, excuse me, you decide to go with the Tough Gaming card versus let's say the dual card, like what are you actually getting, right? Some people kind of wonder about like what might be some of the design differences. So let's go ahead and quickly touch on that. So the dual card, keep in mind the dual cards are already gonna be really cool. In like real world gaming, the dual card is gonna give you temperatures that are in the low 60s, probably like around like 58, 59, 60, 61 C. Um, it's very, very good. The tough gaming card similarly is actually gonna give you about the same temperatures. So some people might go like, that doesn't seem like it makes any sense, right? Well, you have to remember uh, a key factor is that one, this card is clocked higher, okay? And there's also a little bit of a noise profile. Now our noise profile is absolutely outstanding. The dual card is actually even quieter than the FE card. Um, and it's really, really quiet. It's an impressive card in terms of just how quiet it is. Now there's a dual VBIOS design. So you can switch this back and forth between either the quiet mode or the performance mode. Now for one of the first times ever, the Tough Gaming graphics card doesn't ship with the P mode enabled. Normally when we have a dual VBIOS switch on a card, we prioritize uh, the performance mode and then you can switch it into the quieter mode if you even want it to be quieter. Now most of the time the performance mode to be honest is already pretty quiet and that's the reason why we tune it. But here we decided to even further optimize it and go with just absolute quiet because the cooler is already so performant. Um, and the benefit here is that if you kind of switch, depending on the profiles, that's where you'll notice much more of a difference. So if you were to go and toggle this, you could actually then start to see like five, six, seven, eight degree temperature delta differences. And also the memory would even run quite a bit cooler under the tough gaming card. Um, and that just comes down to here. One, you're gonna have a larger heat sink with six heat pipes versus a smaller heat sink with only four heat pipes. Um, the Tough Gaming graphics card has RGB lighting zones, two of them. So as I noted, one right here, and then there's one right on the horizontal profile. The dual doesn't have any RGB. Um, it has a higher GPU boost clock. So it's essentially, it's just factory overclock to a higher degree than the dual card. So it boosts a little bit higher. That usually gives you about three to five frames on average. It's not like a huge performance uplift, but it's a little bit of a performance uplift. The maximum though, power limit is the same on both cards. It's approximately about 216 Watts. The default is 200 and then the max is 216. And pro tip, if you're wondering about, um, some competitors out there are not even giving you that same max power limit. So they're actually kind of performance tuning range is even less than that. And the FE card actually provides the same effective power limit as our, our dual card and our tough gaming graphics card, but some other add and board partners are not even giving you that same actual max power limit. It's actually less. So. Again, we're giving you more, okay? Um, another cool element is, of course, the Tough Gaming graphics card is going to be giving you that kind of premium total design where metal shroud and metal backplate, where here the dual has a metal backplate, um, but it is a plastic shroud. And then also the PCB and the power delivery design is a little bit higher end, of course, on the Tough Gaming, where here you're going to have a, a 10 power stage based design uh, with higher performing capacitors, right, uh, than the dual model. But keep in mind, even the dual model has a higher power stage design um, and power phase configuration than even the FE model. So you st it's quite impressive uh, when you can actually consider the price point. So um, really both are fantastic cards. It just really comes down to, you know, 
Do you want to spend a little bit more to get a little bit card that will even give you a little bit lower temperatures? Maybe you run in a hotter chassis, a hotter environment, a higher ambient, or maybe you want the RGB lighting. Maybe you want that premium material. Maybe you just want a little bit of that higher quality, you know, PCB design. That's going to be up to you. Um, now, in terms of pricing, I'm going to give you guys the pricing here in a moment. So just give me a second. And I know somebody asked about the dual in white. That, that'll be coming next month. So right now, in terms of relative availability, we will have the um, the tough gaming graphics card and the dual graphics card pretty much available uh, today. So you can actually go pick those up right now. I think they're listed already on our Asus eStore. So you can pretty much get them right now. Um, let me see right here. Give me one second if I've got my uh, image here. And I will bring up, yeah, here we go. Okay. <clears throat> So in terms of pricing uh, for the dual card, it's coming in pretty much at the uh, quote unquote uh, MSRP for NVIDIA. So $599. Um, and then when you take a look at the OC model, uh, that goes up to $609. So essentially like $600 or $610. So it's a small delta if you want to be able to get the overclocked model. The models are exactly the same, just the overclocked model has a little bit of a higher clock speed. Okay. And then when you're taking a look at the tough gaming model, um, we have essentially the standard, which comes in at $650, right? So that's uh, so if you compare that, you could be like a $40 delta between the dual and between the standard. Um, tough gaming, but keep in mind the tough gaming also has a little bit of a higher clock speed, right? Um, so again, that's a $40 delta between that and for those upgrades that I noted. And then the overclocked model is again, the same exact model, but it comes with a factory overclock. So your two models, essentially 600 or 610 or 650 and 680. Those are going to be your respective price points for the dual and the tough gaming series. Okay. Uh, let me go ahead and quickly see if I have what, what questions we have there because we did uh, talk, we did cover quite a bit there. Um, so Michael's going is for 1080 and 2K and 4K pending game of the dual. I'm not sure I can exactly read your statement there, but I think what you might be asking is like kind of the performance. Yeah, a 4070 really smooth for 1080p gaming experience, even at high refresh rate. So if you're talking about, you know, being able to game like at 165, um, you know, Hertz, which is there's a lot of 1080p monitors that we have like at that price point, or again, even like 240 Hertz, you're looking in that space. Um, in the 2K, so 1440p based gaming experience, again, very, very solid. Um, you're not probably going to be looking at maybe something like 240, but you can definitely be looking to high refresh rate gaming experience. And uh, definitely if you're also looking to maybe enable something like DLSS, you can easily, of course, uh, punch that up even a bit further. And I think another thing that people overlook is that one of the key benefits you have with DLSS is that you kind of eliminate some of the quote unquote CPU bottleneck. So a lot of times when you see reviews, when it talks about performance, the performance is being maximized by trying to use the fastest CPUs that are on the market. You don't get a lot of reviewers that are using CPUs from two or three years ago, right? Right? Um, and the benefit that you can have there is you kind of are removing a little bit of that bottleneck you might have there in terms of maximizing the performance. And in 4K, even the average, even under raster gaming performance with a lot of modern games is you could be looking at, you know, um, you know, 45, 55, 65 and higher frames a second. It just depends on the game engine. You know, Doom is very different than Cyberpunk, which is different than Forza, which is different than Company Heroes. So it depends on that. But it's actually a very capable card. Uh, I think at actually any of those resolutions. If you're, of course, looking for ultra max, at max image quality settings and ultra high refresh rates, then, you know, you could be pushing the 4070 if you're talking about pure raster performance. Um, so I think, you know, really it's well suited for 1080p, 1440p, and also a n good number of games in 4K, but it does come down to your kind of gameplay settings and the game engine that you're running, right? Um, somebody asking about the RG Citro 2 Pro, um, nothing's happened to it, just hasn't come out yet. You know, we make a lot of products in terms of their announcements and sometimes it takes the time to be able to design and develop, uh, you know, the kind of new features and the Citro 2 Wireless Pro is a very unique design. There's nothing even else like on the market and we just want to make sure that everything is working the way it's intended to before we actually release it, release it. Um, is the gray clear? Yeah. So it's not like I'd say perfectly clear. It's like a little bit of a translucent kind of like smoked. Um, or tinted type of appearance. It's actually similar to kind of what we have here with this material that we put on the Prime motherboard where it is actually transparent, but it does have a little bit of a tint to it, okay? 
Uh, Mr. Matt Lee gives us some feedback right here. He says, I've uh, been hands-on with the Tough Gaming 4070 this week, and I've been very impressed for sure. I love the fact that it still has a single 8-pin too. Yeah, I think it's great just from a flexibility standpoint that one, that's a simple cable, so it's very clean. And again, everybody that has a current pre-existing power supply, you're good to go. And because of the great power efficiency that you have with the card, again, remember 4070 is probably only nominally taking around that 180 to about 190 watts under gaming load. Users that have, you know, 550 watts, 650 watts, 750 watt, 850 watt power supplies, they are entirely fine. They don't have to go even consider buying a new power supply. The power wattage envelope that they're dealing with for that system, it's literally just a drop in graphics card and they're good to go, right? Hey, uh, Lando C, if you guys still want one of the best sites out there that, you know, actually does a deep dive real review into, in terms of a lot of actually components, um, you guys should actually check out uh, Lando C. They're a great site. I used to work with them actually when I handled our uh, technical product uh, marketing sampling and I was working with media on the media reviews, um, but they're a great place and you can actually check out a wide number of reviews and he's got some really cool graphs and some data that he actually presents there to you that I think necessarily isn't necessarily always covered too and some of the you YouTube format but very cool man thanks for letting us know that you like the feedback on the new design there for the pro art cards uh depoets gives us some feedback the pro art z790 creator wi-fi motherboard has been seriously impressing me with my 13900k and 128 gigabytes of ram now that's a serious combination i'm digging that man and also you got to love that 10g networking right i know that you're a big fan of that right uh, Richie Tech uh, is known there is that I have the Prime Z790 Dash A and I've been looking for a white graphics card for ages and I'm now in love with the Dual. Yeah, um, I think it's a great option, but also keep in mind we, we did also update the Dual series already in the prior 3060 series situation. We actually have some on promo right now that also look perfect uh, with the Prime series motherboards. They have a really nice white design aesthetic that's also on there and I'll be showing those off in a little bit as well, okay? Um, Michael goes, can I only switch between QMP with the hardware switch not via software? That is correct, yes. Um, and the reason being is that technically uh, the vBIOS has to be initialized like when you start the system and when the driver actually loads and references it. And so that's the reason why you, do, you can't toggle it like you know dynamically through software. You have to shift it in that regard. So yes, you essentially would have your system shut off. You would toggle the power, you toggle the vBIOS in either Q mode or P mode and then you would be good to go, okay? All right. So that takes care of us there in terms of um, the dual base graphics cards and uh, I think also the tough gaming graphics cards. So I covered actually both of them. I covered the, the tough gaming and I covered the dual series and I gave you guys a little bit of a preview there for the ROG Strix that's going to be coming out a little bit later. Uh, if you guys have any other questions, feel free and let me know. And no, Stardust, there's no updates right now on the UQXR. As always, when there is going to be an update, it will be posted in the PCIY group or covered here in the weekly stream. Okay. Okay, uh, let's go ahead and keep moving this along. Um, and again, if I missed anything, if somebody doesn't have any questions, uh, let me know. Oh, actually, you know what? I know what I was going to cover. I do actually have uh, something that I do want to talk to you guys about. So let me go ahead and do that. Give me one second here. And um, let's see if anybody knows. Anybody in the chat, can you tell me if you know what GPU uh, guard is? Let's see. Let's see if anybody knows what GPU guard is. Uh, I'm going to throw this out to uh, Lan OC. Lan OC, Mr. West. I talked about this with you years ago when we did some of our briefings on our graphics card design. And um, I just wanted to find out. Let's see if maybe you remember what it is. Uh, Enbo is asking, do the Pro Art cards get P four pin PWM connectors? No. So um, I, you're referring to that, like on the RG Strix cards, they have the Fan Connect 2 headers. No, that the Fan Connect 2 header design is still something that we're only putting on the ROG Strix based graphics cards. It's not something that you would see like on the Pro Art series. Okay. So I'm not sure if uh, Wes is still there, Lando C is still there, but if anybody has any thoughts or if they think they know what GPU guard is, let me know. We're gonna give you, I'm gonna give you a second while I drink some of my tea here and we'll see. Uh, 
<laughs> so much pressure. Oh, uh, you know what that means? That means probably I think I know. See, he's, he's he's trying to use uh the Google machine. He's trying to find. He's trying to search frantically and trying to see will Google give him the answer. <laughs> it's quite all right. No worries, man. No worries. Uh, let's go ahead and give you guys a little bit of insight in terms of this. So I know a lot of people. You know, always try to wonder, like, what are the difference? What are the benefits of, you know, Asus in terms of what they, um, you know, bring to the table in terms of their, their, when you're buying a graphics card. And I think our mantra for what we always try to give you guys is a perspective of, you know, is um, production quality in terms of, you know, not only things like our fabrication process, like our auto extreme production process, which if you guys don't know about it, the auto extreme pro production process is still actually something that is still pretty unique and uh, pretty exclusive to Asus across the board when we talk about entry to high-end base graphics cards so um what actually auto extreme is is the fabrication process it's in an, it's an entirety so everything from not only the selection of the components but to the actual uh, soldering process to the aio in inspection so the optical inspection process to the surface mount component um, standardization we were actually the first manufacturer to unilaterally uh, implement smt production across all graphics cards for components that actually wasn't the case there was literally some vendors that you would still have people that were literally putting still some components on certain types of cards the cool thing here is that it didn't matter which graphics card you bought from us if you bought a 150 fifty dollar graphics card to a thousand dollar graphics card they were all using the same advanced production process right um, and they're using consistency in terms of a lot of the premium type of components whether they're like fully molded alloy inductors or actually the elimination of certain things like what you're seeing there which is the elimination of a certain type of soldering process which is reduces actually adding additional heat to the pcb and to components right but there's actually something that's pretty cool that we do have let me actually show you something here so uh, we're going to take a look. This is actually an image from Tech Power Up, one of my actually favorite sites that's are out there. If you guys don't check out Tech Power Up, you should check that out. Very good review site. Um, and you'll see right here, here is a PCB shot of the Founders Edition graphics card. So hey, here you actually have your 4070 GPU. And if you actually take a look around, this is the actual GPU die itself, right? Here's the FE. Now let's take a look at our card, okay? Now, can anybody tell me if they see the difference? You got one right here. And then you got one right here. Now, there's a lot of other stuff that's different, right? The PCB, the topology, the VRM components, the power phase design, right? Those things, like I said, on the dual, they're already upgraded compared to this. But there's actually something just specific to around this GPU die area. And that's actually going to be these little guys right here. Um, and to my knowledge right now, if you actually check any other manufacturer, they do not do this. Um, so this is actually something that we call GPU bond. Um, and so this actually is a special process that is, uh, helps to essentially um, mitigate essentially flex and torsion. So graphics cards, uh, they can go through thermal shock, they can go through vibration, you know, movement when you ship them. There's a lot of different factors. And actually the bond that actually occurs when the actual GPU is actually placed on the substrate, the PCB, right? Uh, there can actually be variability over time, right? And this can actually lead to um, issues uh, long term with reliability and durability. Now, it doesn't guarantee it, you can entirely have a design and a card that, of course, does not feature this bonding design, right. But this is a subtle premium, it is a premium point that we do add into the production that helps to just elevate the quality. It is something that you're not going to get on another graphics card is this bonding process that it just helps to improve the overall long-term reliability and the durability of the product, right? So yeah, that's in case you've seen it, and I don't know any reviewer that's actually ever talked about it, uh, short of way back when I used to work with reviewers and I talked to them about it, like, hey, this is a value proposition that you get when you consider buying an Asus graphics card. This is something that you get. So um, now you know, if you didn't know, GPU bond is what we have right here is on those little corners. Um, so. There you can see no GPU bond, and here you can see GPU bond. All right. Yeah. So uh, overall, just again, a cool little touch point that we have in terms of what we do when we're bringing the attention to detail. And I think the really cool part is, again, is that type of technology, right? And that type of design and fabrication process, it doesn't matter whether you're going to buy the dual card. So our most entry 4070, whether you buy the Tough Gaming or whether you buy the ROG Strix based graphics card, all of them feature that. So you get that benefit regardless of whichever graphics card you're going to be buying. Okay. Um, 
and in terms of like PCB, there's even other factors that gets a little bit more complicated. So Wes is asking about something like in the PCB that can also be more variable. Um, the PCB layer count take, for instance, in some models could be higher than others, and that can provide certain benefits. So like an example of that, like in the 4070 Ti, the ROG Strix has actually a higher PCB layer count than in the tough gaming model. And that also leads to an additional cost increase because it leads to, of course, um, improved signal integrity performance, which can give you a little bit of more stability and margin sometimes when you're pushing it a little bit higher clock speeds, right? Um, that's again, it's on the edges, but it's very similar to kind of like on a Maximus motherboard versus an RG Strix board. They might both be eight layer PCBs, but the Maximus is a what's called low loss PCB, which means it's superior for its signal integrity performance, okay? Um, so now you guys know, if you didn't know, a cool little feature that we have in terms of our graphics cards, okay? All right, um, let's go ahead and go to another new product that we've got right here, and that's going to be the ZenScreen MB249C. Um, this is actually a really cool product that I'm actually excited about in terms of us introducing here. So we have a massive lineup of portable displays. Um, we literally have everything from like 13 inches to now we have up to this 24 inch base model. We have everything from touch to, of course, to OLED to ultra high refresh rate, you know, 240 Hertz. Um, you know, we have ones that are fully wireless and portable. So they have an integrated battery and they can actually uh, receive wireless display from, you know, your laptop or from your phone um, or from different types of devices. So we've got all types of solutions. This one is really cool because what we've seen is definitely over the last couple of years, a change and a transition to people wanting to have even more flexibility at how they work within their home. Maybe they're in a hybrid type scenario. Um, maybe they're just looking for different types of flexibility in their office as well. And so this new MB series monitor is actually a portable but large format monitor. Now, technically, sure, you can move any monitor, but it's not going to be anywhere as light as anywhere as convenient or anywhere near as slim as what you would have with this display. So here you can see one of the cool things is it actually comes with these partition hooks. So it could be easily hanged on a partition, which you see commonly if you work in an office and you have cubicles. So you can actually see how it's mounted in there. It does feature HDMI connectivity and USB-C connectivity with USB-C supporting both display and 65 watts of power. So that works great if you wanna connect this to like a laptop and be able to have a single cable in terms of power. But the other cool one is that you can also see that it integrates an integrated handle and kickstand. And so the cool thing is with the handle kickstand, that gives you an easy ability to lift this up and move it out. So again, if maybe you were moving from your office and you want to go work in your living room, or maybe you have a kitchen island, you want to sort of prop this up on the island, bam, you could do that, kick it out, and you're good to go. You now have stability. It's as opposed to like physically carrying this monitor around that might have a big base and then just trying to stabilize it. It's all integrated within the display, giving you that kind of more seamless experience. And you'll also notice something here that is very common on many of our portable displays, which is actually a quote unquote tripod mount. And we'll talk about that one in a little bit here. But you can see again, how just how easy it is that you could prop it up and you could take a look uh, at it and you'd be good to go. It does also have integrated speakers. So if you know you're taking maybe calls on it, you wanna to listen to a little bit of music, some podcasts some stuff like that. They're of course not gonna be the most dynamic speakers, but hey, for these type of scenario, uh, it's nice again to just have a secondary option there in terms of audio output, okay? Um, now, in terms of the different type of configuration parameters that you have, uh, you can also see right here that the C model does actually come with a clamp. The cool thing actually about the clamp design is you'll see right over there, it, it easily allows you to clamp it straight into your desk and then be able to have it in a more ergonomic position. So if you want to rotate it uh, for horizontal or if you want to, uh, well, horizontal or vertical, right? So portrait or uh, landscape orientation, you can do that. So really flexible. And this model will come included with that actual quote unquote clamp and arm. So uh, we have models that sometimes don't include that and some models that do come included, but because this model is kind of really designed to give you this type of level of flexibility, you can keep that stationary, right? Then pop it off and then, you know, you still use the kickstand. So it's really easy to kind of be able to move it about in these different types of configurations. And you can see right there, hey, we went from are you know more uh, vertical oriented orientation where it's great works great for maybe email for maybe kind of scrolling documents things along those lines as you see coding and productivity to then maybe something that might be more kind of creation focused or more media consumption based this is an ips based display it does uh <clears throat> excuse me, an IPS-based display, and it's full HD in terms of the resolution. And you'll see right here uh, just how easy it is to access and that tripod mount, how it easily connects to that and pretty much just can pop off and pop on. So very, very simple, very easy to use, 
not complicated and you are going to be good to go. So that is going to be the Zen screen MB249C. This will be coming in at a 200, excuse me, $350 uh, for this unit. You can also note, as I noted right there, that HDMI, uh, the DisplayPort Type-C uh, cable with the 60, uh, 60 watts of power delivery as well, headphone jack, and then your traditional, of course, power connection um, to be able to power the monitor as well. So a lot of different options for you there with that MB249C. Uh, LAN monitor. Yeah, I don't know if I would, I mean, maybe it's like a like a secondary display for just kind of setting it up there. I mean, I don't know if it would be great for the LAN because it's not high refresh rate, but we do have our XG series portable displays, which go up to 17 inches, and those can even have high refresh rate, um, which I think that could be a great choice for like a LAN gaming monitor. So, um, you know, you, we still, we, we definitely, like I said, we cover the gamut in terms of, I think, uh, all the different types of scenarios, but, you know, it, it really comes down to, you um, you know, picking the right monitor for the right use case, right? Um, and I think what it's, somebody else had another question in there. Let me go ahead and see if I can check what the question was. Give me one second here. What, oh, okay, I think I see. What is the weight? Um, what is this, 2.8 2 .8 kilos? So that's like what, about like six, a little over six pounds? It's pretty light, six pounds. It's not, it's not, it's not heavy. Um, of course, it depends on the stand, right? Um, let me do, actually double check that. Let me bring up the product page. I'll show you guys the product page here and I will link it for you guys right here. So again, Zen, uh, Zen Screen MB249C, again, IPS. Uh, USB-C comes with that C-clamp mouse mount, de uh, mount design, right? You get all that flexibility. Um, all the details are pretty much broken down there, but let me go ahead and see right here under our weight. Yeah, so 2.85, yeah, so that's a little bit over six pounds. And this monitor is also applicable to our ASUS limited three-year warranty. So again, many competitors actually, it's not uncommon for their more de uh, desktop pro productivity tape monitors to only have like a one-year warranty, but we do offer a three-year limited warranty. I did say 2.85 kilogram, right? <laughs> All right, so that is the Zen Screen MB249C. And again, price point on that guy, um, as I noted, it should be $350 is the price point uh, for that. Let me just go ahead and double check right here. Yep, that is correct, yep. Uh, $350. And again, you should probably be seeing this one pop up available online, you know, probably in the next, uh, you know, next seven to 30 days, approximately just again, depends on kind of the e-tailers and the retailers as far as their kind of resident timeline. Okay. All right. So next up, uh, we are going to go ahead and round out our last a new product update. And that's going to be, of course, with the power supplies. So let's go ahead and touch on the last update to our power supply series. So that's going to be with the ROG Thor 850 watt P2. P2 means it's that second generation Thor series. Now we've been busy on the power supply front. We already launched the 1600 watt, which somebody was asking around. We launched the 1200 and the 1000 watt. We just launched the Tough Gaming uh, ATX 3.0 series gold fully modular power supplies, which absolutely are fantastic from the price to performance. And if you want ATX 3.0, you can get that. They have fully etched modular cables, which look fantastic. If you guys want to see some beautiful photos, look at Mr. Matt Lee's um, social channels or check out the post that we have in our PC DIY group. You'll see these really beautiful cables that they actually come with. They're the same cables that are also with the, uh, the Loki. They're a little bit different, but they're also still fully etched. Really nice and smooth and flexible cables really make uh, um, management really, really nice. The uh, Loki series are SFXL, but also ATX 3.0. But here, let's go ahead and take a look at the Thor 850 watt. So give me one second to go ahead and open this up here. And we will take a look at this guy. All right. So, of course, uh, the big element that you're going to get with the Thor series based power supply is going to be uh, right there in the beginning, right? When we just saw that portion right there is that it is going to be a power supply that does feature, uh, of course, RGB lighting on it. 
Um, and in addition to that, it has our premium ROG heatsink design. And so the heat sinks are literally about twice as dense as what you would traditionally find in a normal base power supply. That allows us to have a couple of benefits in terms of not only running the internal power componentry, which is a uh, very high quality and very performant, but to run more efficiently and also much quieter. Uh, the Thor series are pretty much the quietest series of power supplies in their class by significant margin there very, very quiet. Um, in fact, most of the times you're not even gonna have the fan come on and that can partially actually be extended because of the improved thermal dissipation performance from the actual heat sinks that we do have in there. Um, in addition to that, of course, you're gonna get that uh, large 135 millimeter uh, fan that has a ring barrier for static pressure optimized downward firing airflow, has a zero dB operating mode. Now, another premium point that is gonna exist right here is what you're gonna see there, which is going to be the OLED live dash display. That display allows you to have a real time wattage monitoring for your system, which is pretty sweet. You then have, of course, the air RGB lighting, which is gonna be present on here, one zone right there, one zone down there, and then another little zone right there at that top corner. So essentially kind of like three little levels of RGB lighting. Um, this can also be fully synchronized with your motherboard. There's a small cable that plugs from the power supply to the motherboard, and then you can sync all of that up in its RGB glory. So uh, you do have full ARGB lighting sync support with the Thor power supplies. So you can see right there is a full, of course, platinum PSU. Uh, also has Lamba A++ based certification. And of course it is fully modular. The cables also here, there's a distinguishing point. Now, some people wonder what, hey, this is a little more expensive uh, than I'd see other 850 watts. We have great options. Get the ATX, you know, um, 3.0 tough gaming with the fully etched modular cables at a much lower price point if you're really only concerned with the price. The Thor is really for the people that want not only the Platinum PSU, um, but you also want the premium design, you want the even the quietest absolute level of operation, you want the wattage display. But this one, compared to almost any other PSU, also comes with individually sleeved cables. So if you guys look at the pricing for uh, cables, they're significantly more expensive than the standard kind of black cables that come, even with a premium power supply the cables with the Thor are gonna be higher grade than what you will see with a traditional, even high quality 850 watt power supply. Um, now, that is also, again, a key differentiator uh, that you do want to keep in mind in terms of that. As a radio know there, the Asus Aura uh, RGB sync support, and you're good to go. So um, we, again, have the 850 watt, we have the 1000 watt, we have the 1200 watt and we have the 1600 watt and all p2 models right now do ship with the 12 volt high power adapter cable included so that means that while they're not atx 3.0 um, no product actually requires atx 3.0 you do have full support for um all 40 series based graphics cards so you can pair this up with a 4070 ti 4080 and you're entirely fine the, the cables in the box so essentially it would be like a four adapter cable that goes to the power supply and then it goes out to of course the 12 volt high power connector that you have on the graphics card okay um, here are just some individual shots that you have there of the thor power supply looks good i love the way it looks but that is going to be essentially the wrap up there to our uh P2 series. So that wraps up the entire PC series. So 850 watt, 1000 watt, 1200 watt, and 1600 watt. Michael gives us some love right there. He says, I love my Thor. Uh, Mr. Matt Lee says, the power supply would look just as beautiful inside as out. Yeah, I think it absolutely looks stunning. Although Mr. Matt Lee's done a fantastic job to show, I think, some of the really nice design of the uh, Tough Gaming Series power supply. And those Tough Series power supplies look also still really nice. Um, actually, I think all of our power supplies are some of really the nicest looking power supplies on the market. I don't think that we have a bad looking power supply uh, in any one of our lineup. But definitely, I think that the Thor series um, really kind of do take it to the next level. And they, they really kind of uh, have a great look and aesthetic right in terms of that. Um, let me go ahead and see if I can bring this up here quickly. So if anybody is wondering, kind of just like maybe like what the, you know, uh, the Thor's look, excuse me, the, um, the Tough Gaming looks like. Let's go ahead and quickly we'll look at the Tough Gaming right here. So this is the latest generation Tough Gaming. Looks really nice, really clean. You'll see though, there's no light, there's no OLED wattage monitor, there's no ARGB lighting, but still a really nice, clean, refined monochrome design. A little bit of that nice, tough gaming accents. I like this nice little uh, embossed detail there with just a little bit of contrast there with like a little bit of a chrome styling effect on there. 
looks really clean, um, really nice. And again, these models, they come all the way up to 1,000 watt, and we will actually be offering a Tough Gaming a 1,200 watt later on in the future. So um, right now it's not available, but we will have later. Um, I don't know if we'll have it um, before the end of Q before the end of Q2. Um, hopefully we'll have it before the end of Q2, but we will have a, um, excuse me, we will have a, uh, a 1200 watt base model. And let me see right here if I can show you guys, if I can bring it up right here. Just in case anybody's wondering about the, the cables, I don't know if I can quickly find it here in the feed. If I can't quickly find it, I'm not gonna worry about it. Uh, oh, cool. I found it. I found it. I found it. All right. So these uh, pictures. Some of the photo images, but you guys can see uh, this is the actual fully etched modular cables. And you can definitely see these cables look quite different than the traditional power supply cables that come with most power supplies. And they are uh, thin and really, really nice lightweight. And they have a little bit of almost like a waxed feel to them, really nice and clean. And uh, the thing I really love about them is that they offer allow for a level of what I call malleability. So they're really nice and smooth to be able to kind of bend and route and adjust to where you want them. Um, and this is something that's hard to kind of get a value sense until you actually work with it. Um, but to me, unquestionably as a builder, I would really love working with these type of cables, or it's also the reason why I love like an individually sleeve cable, which I have here in my system next to me, like also comes with the Thor in terms of just, it's a nice easier level of just flexibility. Uh, here you can see this is the Tough Gaming and here is the uh, Loki. So they both have the fully etched uh, kind of uh, cables, um, but you'll see that they're just a little bit different, right? The kind of Tough Gaming have a little bit more of kind of like a waxy kind of sheen to them. Um, but there you go. So that is if you want an ATX 3.0. Um, the cables that come with the, the, the Thor power supply are going to be different, but they are individually sleeved, okay? Um, hey, JJ, I saw a pick of the new Fantex chassis, and it looks like a new formula board is in the photo. Um, nope, uh, might just be maybe some creative editing that they did. Right now, we don't have any new plans for a new formula board. Uh, so the last formula that we produced was the Z690 formula. But um, as always, you know, we are thinking about things for the future. But right now, nothing new to be able to note in terms of any new formula models. Um, any idea on the restock for the 1000 watt? Actually, I don't think it's fully hit in terms of full channel availability, um, but you should continue to probably see it get a little bit better over the coming weeks. So we are pushing out to see more availability. I'll see if I can check for a PM update in terms of what our local inventory is looking like or the kind of the sell through. So how many we've actually looked, we've already sold through. Um, somebody's asking how much will the pro art cards cost? I can't tell you that yet. We don't have our MSRP set. Um, positioning wise though, I would probably expect that, you know, positioning wise, the way that they're kind of segmented, ROG Strix of course are more expensive than Tough Gaming. And I would expect the pro art cards to actually come in a little bit under the Tough Gaming. So probably pricing wise should be at or around kind of Tough Gaming-ish uh, price point, right? Um, I wouldn't expect it to be more expensive, but again, don't uh, hold to anything, right? Like I said, we'll have pricing later on when we actually release the cards and we'll fully detail the pricing uh, once we actually launch them, okay? Any plans to stop by QuakeCon this year? Um, I don't know if we're having any of our ASUS team head over to QuakeCon. I know that we just finished uh, finalizing some plans for some other events that we're attending, um, but I don't know about QuakeCon. So, um, but you know, watch our social media channels. We definitely try to make announcements there resonant to anything that we're doing on that side. Okay. All right, guys. So that takes care of um, all of the new product announcements. So a, a pretty cool range of new products, right? New ProArt series-based graphics cards, which are coming out. The new dual um, graphics card, right? Um, and of course, white and in black, the tough gaming-based graphics card. And then of course, the RG Strix card that's just coming out later. Uh, and then the MB249C, um, right, that we also have. So all really, really cool uh, products that we have available to you there. So let's see what else we got here. I don't know if we're gonna, I'm hoping that we have enough time for the PC DIY Builder Spotlight, but we will see you guys. Um, let me go ahead and see, we got through the UEFI updates. I've got some promos that I wanna be able to touch on here, guys. So give me one second here. 
All right, uh, let's go and get ready to go into it. Uh, first one is going to be some cool promos that we do have going on right here, guys. So give me one second to load this up. Again, if anybody has any questions, feel free to go ahead and drop them in the chat. Um, so we do right now have with NAB going on, we've got a whole range of promos, especially on a lot of pro art series based products. So aligning kind of with the announcement for the pro art based graphics card, if you're looking for some cool promotions, you can see that we've got a range of different products that do currently have promotions. So a number of motherboards that are seeing some nice discounts, you know, could be, you know, 10, 20, 30, uh, dollars plus um, also a wide number of monitors uh, if you guys are not familiar a really big benefit with our pro art monitors is outstanding color accuracy color access controls uh, impressive ergonomics and a lot of io we have many monitors that support everything from like daisy chaining um, which means that you can actually connect monitors directly together as opposed to running them back to like the graphics card, USB-C connectivity, uh, high speed multiple USB ports with many models having like four USB ports. And of course, flagship level specifications with like our flagship monitors having things like um, mini LED technology and being able to support, you know, nit ratings of over 1400 nits, right? So really across the uh, range, right? We've got everything from OLED, 32 inch 4k oled to you know uh 4k mini led to ultra wide to even 1900 by 1200 uh increase in horizontal resolution so a lot of options right there so and even uh it looks down there like they, they put some laptops in there on promos too so maybe you're interested in some laptops those are also on promo so let me drop those there in the chat How do I get my hands or figure on uh, an Omni mouse? Yeah, that one's a little bit tricky. Uh, we haven't formally released that um, right now. The only figures that we actually have released is we released the Horseman figure, um, which we actually did sell. We sold it through the Asus store. And then we had the seven figure and the seven figure was an exclusive bundle. So you had to buy the Z11 chassis when it came out and it was bundled with it. Um, and then there were some people that bought it like through the gray market, I think. So like they bought it like on eBay or maybe they bought it from like another region. Um, and those are the only two actually like figures that we made. So we haven't ever actually made an Omni figure as of yet. Okay. Yeah. If you're looking for a smaller 40 series card, take a look at 4070. So 4070 and 4070 Ti, um, both of those, you know, you should probably be able to find a card that just about fits in just about any situation. And even the 4070 Ti, those are considerably smaller than also the uh, 4080 or the 4090 series. So you can definitely fit in a chassis and also depends on what you're looking for, right? So like, um, this is our uh, micro ATX chassis. We have the AP201. Again, uh, Mr. Matt Lee and also SNEF uh, has done fantastic builds in this AP201 chassis. It's a micro ATX chassis, um, but it really can accommodate um, just about almost any type of graphics card. A lot of support there for uh, large, robust AIO coolers. So you can even have like a 360 degree, a 360 millimeter AIO type of cooling configuration within this chassis. It's nice, it's compact, very, very good airflow, and you can get it in white and you can get it in black. And we will actually also be releasing the tempered glass edition a little bit later on. So, um, you know, we got you covered either which way. All right, uh, let's get through these promos though. Give me one second. Let me load this page back up here. And uh, we'll get try to get through the most of these. Uh, so this is the MB. Where, okay, uh, here we go, perfect, all right. All right, we're gonna try to <laughs> try to get through these pretty quick, let's go through them. All right, first one is gonna be, we've got our Tough Gaming 4080, 4080 overclock edition, $80 off right now. So normally it's $1399, so $1400, bucks. it's down to, to $1320, okay? So that's $80 savings, to me that's pretty sweet. 80 bucks, that's enough to buy you pretty much the latest and greatest game on the market. Bam, if you want it, you can get it. I'm dropping the link in the chat right now, okay? $80 off. AMD guys out there, we just put this one on promo. 6650XT, 66, this is a great graphics card. Again, if you're looking for like high refresh rate, uh, 1080p gaming, 1440p gaming, um, you know, this one has dropped in its price. We actually have a couple of the Radeons in the 6600 series that are on promo. So we've got, I think, 6600 and 6650, and there's even, I think, a couple of 6750s that are also on promo. Um, so you can check that one out as well. Um, tough gaming fan. These are some of the absolute best fans on the market. A lot of people don't realize that 
a lot of the ARGB fans that are on the market, you compromise a lot times on static pressure performance and on airflow and on bearing quality. There's actually a lot of fans on the market that are still using just standard uh, hydraulic based bearings. Um, you know, they could be using ball bearings, they could be using FDB bearings. These are using though advanced fluid fluid dynamic bearings which are some of the absolute best bearings you can get on the market so they're rated for 250,000 hours they're also critically um, actually a very performant bearing regardless of the axis of orientation so that means whether you're putting them vertical or horizontal the overall lifespan performance is about parity that's not true for all bearings some fans depending on their position actually will take on worse characteristics tonality and lifespan wise. Um, and you'll actually find that many other fans in terms of the ARGB fans could be using a bearing that literally might be 80,000 hours or 40,000 hours, significantly lower lifespan. So this is a huge upgrade compared to many others. Um, they also have a dual array LED design, so quite a bit brighter than I'd say entry level based RGB fans. Uh, I think the balance in terms of, like I said, performance to airflow to this whole pack, this is uh, normally $60 and right now 10 bucks off. So 50 bucks for three fans and you also get the controller. The controller is nice. So if you've got like an older motherboard that doesn't even have like an ARGB header, you can still use this. You could just use the controller. Um, but of course you can also run the controller to a motherboard and then sync and control the fans that way. I absolutely love these Tough Gaming TF120 fans. And if you guys are interested in the white models, the white models will be coming in in May. So we will have them coming in May, but I'm gonna go ahead and drop these in the chat. Again, a nice little price savings for you right there, okay? All right, next up, we've got the B660 Creator D4. This is 30 bucks off. It's a great option if you're looking to be able to jump up to a board that um, you know doesn't have overclocking CPU support, but gives you PCI Gen 5, 2.5 gigabit networking, and a secondary one gigabit networking. Has quick charge 4.0 plus, right? So that means actually high speed uh, charging support from the front USB-C, along with 20 gigabits uh, base connectivity there, right? A lot of M.2 expansion. I think this is a very, very solid option if you're looking, again, just looking for a clean, performance, solid board. 30 bucks off for the B660 Creator D4. Uh, we also have the B550 Creator on sale, 25 bucks off. Great if you're still looking for an AM4 based motherboard, AM4 based options are great still in terms of performance. You got a lot of different CPUs that you can throw in there. You've seen a lot of price reductions on CPUs like the 5800X, 5900X, 5950X. Uh, even if you want to go gaming rise and you want to go with the 5800X 3D, it's still a really good CPU for gaming. And again, this price point, really solid price point. And again, uh, you're gonna get even Thunderbolt on this board, which is pretty rare at this type of price point. Normally it would be way more expensive to get something like uh, Thunderbolt connectivity and uh, 2.5 gigabit um, on this motherboard. So I think this is a really great option right here for $215, save yourself 25 bucks, right? Okay, I'm gonna drop that one in the chat. Next right there, we talked about white graphics cards. Well, we already had one. We had this guy right here. This is the dual um, RTX 3060, um, right? Eight gigabytes graphics card, 20 bucks off right now, $350. This is another perfect card to pair with something like our Prime Series based motherboards. I really love the look of this graphics card and it does even include a white backplate. So um, it's a really nice option right there. Again, 20 bucks off, 350 bucks right there. And this is a nice price delta that, you know, still quite a bit under something like a 4070. So if you can't get up to 4070, you know, you could go there. Um, here we've got the GT6, uh, G, excuse me, GT6000. Um, AX6000. This is one of my favorite routers that we have in our lineup. Okay, $70 off right now, it's 260 bucks. It's Wi-Fi 6, it has a 2.5 gigabit WAM port and 2.5 gigabit LAN. So you get two of those ports. So you can handle high speed internet connection coming into the router and then have another one to connect to your motherboard or your laptop or your other device, right? Um, it has a quad core, two gigahertz plus six, uh, two gigahertz uh, SOC chip. So that's the actual processor inside of there. High speed DDR memory that's on there. So a very performant, very capable router. This is a really, really solid option. Plus you could actually pair two of these together or pair it with any other ASUS router to create your own mesh network if you wanted even more coverage at a later time. And we support both what's called wired and wired backhaul, which means that you can either use a cable to connect the two together and keep both bands free, or you can use one of the bands to connect them two together and then have one kind of like fat, big, high-performing wireless band. But $70 off on this, it's a great option there if you're looking to finally get into Wi-Fi 6 and also have support for 2.5 gigabit networking, okay? 
Um, we also, if maybe you're looking to finally step up and go to Wi-Fi 6E, okay, your mother, you have an older system um, that maybe doesn't have Wi-Fi, maybe you also want to get Bluetooth, we have our PC AXE 58 BT. This is our wireless add-in card. This gives you Wi-Fi 6E and Bluetooth all in an add-in card. Just slot it into a PCI Express slot, install your drivers, and bam, you are good to go. It's 20 bucks off. So normally seven, uh, normally $80, and right now you can get it for $60, okay? So we'll drop that one in there. Uh, we have also here another great savings. This is going to be here the RRG Chakram X, one of my favorite mice that we have in our lineup. This guy is a really impressive sensor. It's 36,000 DPI, our aimpoint sensor with 1% CPI deviation, 8,000 hertz polling rate, tri mode connectivity, so USB C 2.4 and Bluetooth. It has an integrated actually uh, joystick right here, which is pretty cool. Uh, so you can actually see right here, there's a joystick right there. And this compared to the older Chakram, we've actually adjusted the design. So it's more concave and we adjusted the position so more people can even access it. We also added in more buttons. So you can see one, two, three, four buttons plus that. And then you've also got the standard buttons right there. Um, this model also does have the quick swap design. So it's a magnetic design. Don't need, don't even need any screwdrivers. You literally can just pull the shell off and you can swap the switches on here. So if you want to go with loud switches, crisp switches, light switches, soft switches, doesn't matter. You want to go with Juano white dots, TTCs, Kales, Omrons, Cherries, pick the switch you want and put it in there. We're the only manufacturer that lets you do that. It doesn't matter. Steel series, guess what? You can't do it. Razor, you can't do it. <laughs> um, Hyperx, you can't do it. Final mouse, you can't do it. You literally would have to tear open your mouse, take a soldering iron, physically unsolder the switch, and then resolder the switch and hope you don't damage your mouse in the process, right? Uh, whereas with us, with literally, literally two minutes, you could literally take it apart, put the mouse switch in, and then sit, you're done, right? So really, really slick. Uh, onboard memory that's also on there, 30 bucks off. So normally this is 150 bucks. Um, 160 bucks and you can get it for 130 bucks. Uh, Michael is asking um, optical switch. It's not, this one is not, we actually have our ROG micro switch, which is our premium kind of mechanical switch, which has an electrical, a gold plated junction in there. But this is the push fit socket two design. So you can actually support optical switches. So if you did want to put Omron optical switches in there, you can. But we also have a very interesting design that is called a, um, kind of like optimized zero bounce delay design. It's called our pivoted mechanism where there's actually a design that's on the inside of the kind of the, the, the top level of where the actual switch gets actuated. So um, it allows for almost instantaneous actuation. So the performance you get between the me mechanical switch and an optical switch is essentially parity. So there's not really kind of like a clear benefit in that regard. Um, Mr. Matt Lee gives some feedback. I've been using the Chakram X religiously for gaming for five months now. Absolutely love it. Battery life is excellent. Yeah, um, I love it. And especially if you're somebody, I'd say a little bit taller. So, you know, I'm about six foot two. Um, if you're 5'10", 5'11", 5'12", 6 foot, and you've got a little bit bigger hands, I think this is a great mouse for you too because I also love that it just gives you a little bit more coverage for this kind of portion of your palm and your thumb to a little bit rest in so it's quite comfortable. Um, so uh, it's a really nice option right there. Uh, Mr. Lan, uh, see Mr. West says, soldering new switches in my mouse, been there. Uh, yeah, uh, that's a really great thing is on all of our ROG mice, um, the, you don't have to worry about that. It's a really simpler process. Um, so here's, I think maybe my star of the show, guys. This is my star of the show for the promo that I think is absolutely killer. And I think you should be getting this, okay? This is the same keyboard that you guys see me use right here during the stream, right? Um, this guy right here, it's a Claymore 2 right? Um, so it's a wired and wireless keyboard. I absolutely love this keyboard right here. And it's is a crazy, crazy Pomo right now. So this keyboard normally goes for $270. It's $110 off right now, 160 bucks, right? Um, the awesome thing about the Claymore 2 is it's not just one thing, it's tons of stuff. So the Claymore 2, right? Uh, we really led the industry here, right? Um, we've even seen a competitor copy this uh, design, um, but even we had this in the original Claymore, which came out more than five years ago. So again, we did it first, okay? Um, but in this design, the cool thing is you can remove the numpad and you can put it on the left or you can put it on the right hand side. So for gaming, I love having a TKL type of form factor. So I can angle my keyboard, adjust it, put my mouse a little bit tighter, 
reduce the strain on my labrum right here and keep that to be more comfortable for me. But then when I want to be able to add the numpad, I can attach the numpad and I can take advantage of it. Plus you've got your macro keys right there, which you can customize. You have that nice, smooth, dedicated volume wheel that's also on there. Big beefy battery on here for crazy battery life on this model. Um, you have an integrated magnetic storage dock, which is gonna be on this unit. Okay, um, so the integrated storage dock allows you to go ahead and slot in your wireless adapter. Um, but again, you can also connect via USB uh, connectivity. It also comes included with a wrist rest on this unit. You have per key lighting. It has our ROG RX optical switches uh, with also improved stabilizers. The switches are super stable, really, really nice. Um, to mirror this even with a nice mechanical keyboard, you'd have to probably go with box switches and low profile keycaps, which are tight. Because in a normal mechanical keyboard, there's a lot of what's called keycap deviation and wobble. Um, so if you actually physically put your finger on your keycap, you'll probably notice that it moves around a bit. And that's because with a center weighted stem, the stem moves around and, and an RX based switch, it's a four point stem design. And that keeps that keycap really smooth, really solid, really stable. Uh, there's also, as you saw right there, an actual USB pass through, which is nice. So if you wanna add in another item like a mouse, a headset, a different type of accessory, you can also go ahead and connect that in there. Again, this price point, this is really hard to beat. It's an app, it's literally, I think it's like a steal. Uh, if you wanna get a really nice keyboard, um, then I would check out the Claymore 2. For that price point, 160 bucks, um, it's pretty sweet. So this is a massive savings. So Claymore 2 on sale for you guys right there. Uh, keeping it in the um, keyboard mix right here, we've also got the, um, the RG Falchion Annex. Anybody that watches the stream, you guys have probably seen that I've talked about this keyboard as well. This is our compact you know, 65% uh, keyboard, right? But it still keeps arrow keys. I absolutely love this model, $30 off. It features the RG NX switches, which are kind of like our premium upgrade compared to a standard Cherry MX switch. So they actually have an optimized actuation level. They are semi-lubricated, um, so they have a little bit of a kind of smoother feel to them. They're also a little bit quieter. Um, nice battery on this. This is uh, gonna also give you 2.4 gigahertz or USB-C connectivity on this model. You also have an integrated touch bar on there, which you can customize for macro keys. You can see your battery life. You can uh, you can adjust your volume with it, which is really nice, especially for like a 65% uh, keyboard on this model. And it also comes with this really cool uh, cover. So if you wanna actually cover your keyboard, not have any dust, debris, or dander, or get anything in there, if you wanna travel with it, it's really nice. And you can see as you can flip it either to the top or to the bottom. In the bottom, you get a kind of cool little bit of a diffused look if you put it in there. Um, I've used this in a lot of our streams. Um, it's a one of my personal favorite keyboards that we also have here in our lineup. So that is the Argeon Falchion NX, okay? And then rounding out the last couple of promos we got right here, what do we got? We got another big mouse uh, with the RG Spot the X. 30 bucks off. This is the updated model, just like the RG Chakram X. So it's got a really impressive high performing sensor. Um, on this model, you've got 2.4 gigahertz and USB-C connectivity, massive battery life on there, RG micro switches, um, tons of buttons on this model. <laughs> I mean, this model has uh, 12 buttons in terms of total. It also has the little charging dock. Uh, a lot of people like this little charging dock where you can just mount it in there and you can charge the battery. You know, you're good to go in, in, in that regard. Um, it, it's very comfortable again for people with larger hands and if you're an action RPG and RTS and MMO type of person, you might really love this option. And this one, just like the Chakram, is also going to give you that push fit socket design. So if you want to easily swap your switches, you can also swap your switches on this model as well. And there you can see those really nice ROG micro switches that we also have on this model. Okay, so that is going to be the ROG Spatha X that we have here. So let me go ahead and drop that one in there. And I think we're almost wrapped up there. Oh no, that's right. I still got the Gladius. Gladius, 25 bucks off. One of my absolute favorite mice, if I'm not using, uh, probably like the Pugia or the Chakram. I really am a big fan of the Gladius. Gladius, outstanding sensor, nice lightweight design, push fit, supports optical and standard. Almost all the great things that I already talked about, this nice ultralight uh, paracord cable that you've got there on this model. So definitely check that one out there too. Gladius. Um, we've got the RG Strict Scope RX, 30 bucks off, 100 bucks. 
The RG Strict Scope RX is pretty sweet in terms of that one really cool thing that it has that um, you're not going to see probably on that many keyboards. It's fully IP57 certified. So you get all those ROG RX switches that I already talked about, which are really sweet. But this model, literally, you could dunk it in water and it wouldn't matter. Um, so it, it gives you a really, really great feel on the switches. I really love, the, again, the RX base switches that we have on here, really nice, smooth, and consistent. But that IPX certification, it also has USB pass-through. This is a really nice option. Again, if you're somebody that likes having a full-size keyboard and you'll really like having that numkey built on there, you're good to go. Last but not least, let's throw one in headset in there for a promo. We got this guy, 50 bucks off for the ROG Delta S. Um, this is one of our actual flagship uh, headsets. This has an ES Saber DAC and amp built into it, native USB-C connectivity. Put it on your switch, your phone, your laptop, your desktop, it doesn't matter. It works, it gives you great consistent audio. You don't rely on the sound chip of the device you're plugging into. On cup ear controls in there. You have the AI noise canceling microphone on there. You get two swappable ear cups, uh, which is a rarity amongst normal headsets. Uh, that means you can go to the isolated kind of ear cups or you can go to the super breathable ear cups. You can just pull them off. You can swap the ones that you want and you're good to go. Uh, it features actually improved abrasion performance compared to our original Delta uh, Delta model. So that was actually upgraded from the standard to the Delta S. Uh, really clean, of course, design aesthetic, nice and comfortable and lightweight. Um, it has a nice hardened choke design. So you can go ahead and just lift it up and down and make it uh, adjusted to your liking. And again, I'm a, a huge fan of the fact that, like I said, it's native USB-C connectivity, which means it's purely digital. I can plug it into any one of my devices and bam, I'm good to go. All right, guys, that's the ROG Delta S. All right, so that takes care of us there. A um, lot of promos there. We, we went through, I think almost all of them there, but uh, some pretty sweet stuff there. Um, let me see if we had any quick questions that might've came up with anything. Um, somebody asking, so that means Wi-Fi 7 router will come out soon? Mm, we are working on Wi-Fi 7. Wi-Fi 7, I think we'll probably be looking to maybe launch it um, before the end of Q2. Um, but it, that won't really affect any other routers in terms of that. I mean, we've had multiple routers on promotion just because we're putting on promo doesn't really mean anything related to Wi-Fi 7 or even Wi-Fi 6E. Um, so Wi-Fi 6E and Wi-Fi 6 routers are still going to continue to be present in the marketplace. So there's no kind of difference in that. And Wi-Fi 7 um, will really be a kind of the flagship ultra end parting of the, the market. So um, it's a really exciting technology, but it definitely is going to be for a limited audience initially um, for the price point. And also ideally in terms of the feature set and functionality, there will be requirements from the operating system. And we'll probably have a dedicated stream just on Wi-Fi 7. So make sure to keep it tuned. If you're probably interested in Wi-Fi 7, we'll, we'll have more to talk about in the future about that. Okay. All right, uh, doesn't look like any questions on that side. So we look like we're okay there. Give me one second here. All right, so that takes care, guys, of all of our promotions that we had to, to go ahead and touch on, okay? So uh, let me go ahead and see if, um, I guess I can pull up maybe one or two um, PCDIY Builders spotlights. So I think we got a little bit of time, so give me one second here. Uh, Michael says, uh, you have your chair yet? No, I still haven't gotten our team to be able to get me an SL400, our, our ROG chair. So, um, you know, keep letting us know that we would like to get a chair for JJ. I think it would be pretty cool, but uh, maybe, maybe in the not too distant future. We'll see how it goes. All right, uh, let me see right here. I had a folder, um, and this is actually from not a general submission. It's actually... Uh, from a builder, PC builder, who did a really cool uh, Hyperion build. So let me go ahead and... Where is that folder? If not, we'll just go ahead and we'll jump into our submission folder and I will try to go ahead and pull one up right there. Okay, here we go. All right, I got it here, guys. All right, let me go ahead and just load this one up here. All 
All right, so many of you guys know that we did uh, release our RG Hyperion. So our RG Hyperion was, of course, our large uh, chassis, and we've seen already some really amazing builds from a wide range of, of course, um, community members and modders and builders out there when it came to, of course, utilizing the Hyperion. And so this one is from EnterPC. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop this in the chat there. So if you guys wanna go ahead and check out this video, drop them a like, drop them a sub and a follow, you guys should definitely do that. So here we guys, we can check this out. I mean, this is a very, very cool build. So um, now we don't offer the Hyperion in white. Um, our previous Helos, we did have like a silver white edition, our GT501. We offer in white and in black in our GT502. We have it in white and black. The AP201, we have in white and black. But the Hyperion, currently we only have it in standard black. So here they, of course, uh, took it upon themselves to essentially modify it and make it white and then go with some really awesome, of course, uh, Asus ROG based components and took it further. So they have the ROG Ryu, which is our AIO cooler in white. And then they have our Apex board, which is in white. And then the ROG Strix 40 series card, which is in white. Currently we only make the 4080 and the 4090 in white. But overall, um, I think it came out beautifully in terms of the overall design. Of course, the big design element that you get when you go with, of course, a white system is that it's very bold and it's very bright and you add a lot of reflectivity. Um, I don't think one looks better or worse, you know, white or black. Um, I love uh, kind of the, the inkiness that you get with the black and you get kind of a more silhouette effect where you get kind of the lighting that is centrally focused in pockets um, as opposed to whiting. White really kind of exposes everything and kind of fills everything out. So they just to provide two different design aesthetics, but there's also some cool design accents that we can see were added in here where uh, the actual slide tray was also uh, painted in white and also right here normally you'd have the window to be able to things see things like the ROG Thor or our power supply that's installed there and there's also a customization there with just the ROG uh, kind of um, it's not even Cybertex it's like almost a custom uh, design there that they pulled in which was pretty slick and then you can also see the ROG eye that's also in there uh, Mr. Matt Lee says uh, looks so skeletal in white yeah it does have really almost it, it has like a little bit of kind of like a a skeletal frame to it because I think you see these are kind of slats. Um, now, also this looks a little bit different because they don't have the side panels on it and the side panels would definitely give it a little bit of a different vibe because they would tint it and it would darken everything out. Um, I think it would add a little bit of a cool kind of contrast component to it, but it's pretty slick right there. Um, right there, Michael says, seeing the DRAM cooling fan, does Asus have any? We don't have any uh, cooling fans. That's something that also the builder uh, did go ahead and add into the system configuration themselves right there, right? But uh, let's go ahead and just, again, take a look at a little bit more of this shot right here. Overall, really, really clean job in terms, of course, the layout, some really nice touches. Now you can see that they didn't go with everything white. And this is, I think, a great uh, kind of sign of, I think, a, a veteran builder is when they are not afraid to play around a little bit with kind of color variation and not everything has to match. So you can see right here uh, in the cables, they decided to go with essentially a little bit of a color blocking effect here where they've got white and blue. Um, but you can see the rest of the colors are also using a little bit of these kind of gradients to move into kind of some ombre type of colors, right? So you're getting kind of the pinks and the purples and then the blues and the whites, but this is all color complementary in terms of that spectrum. So it all works together. But I love that here that they went with the kind of the white and the blue and then you're seeing the other colors kind of get filled out within a lot of the fans and you can also see right there down in the apex how it's got a little bit of that and i love also this job right here at the top where they added in some little bit of this some kind of some subtle design decals it almost feels like it was part of the chassis design but this is not inherent to the chassis design so a little bit of a closer look as you see it come together you can also see on the inside right here um, we'll see in a, a different shot that they did actually customize that light panel. So the light panel that normally comes in the Hyperion has its own design aesthetic, but here it's a little bit changed up. It's a little bit different than what you would traditionally have there inside of the Hyperion. Um, but overall, I think it came out really, really cool and really distinct kind of design right there. Um, I think somebody noted a name that we had right there. Uh, did somebody give a main recommendation? So here you can actually see him kind of go together uh, with the whole build. Um, this is a memory kit that you can actually only, I think, get in the APEC region, so you can't actually get that here. Um, but overall, pretty, pretty slick. So let's go ahead and you can see right there just how it kind of came together in terms of kind of all the, the build work there. Um, but I think the cool thing right here, right, is you just can see kind of um, all these kind of design elements kind of come together, right? Really, really 
nice design aesthetic in terms of kind of how it was laid out. I, I want to jump into this part just again here. I'm not a fan personally of zip ties. I, I actually like hook and loop fasteners um, just because I like to reuse them. But definitely from a, a pure cleanness of line, zip ties probably give you the cleanest line. Um, although you can also be really, you have to be really careful because you can pinch the cables. You can actually cause the internal actually cable to be damaged if you go too tight, which is another reason why I'm not always a fan of a zip tie. Um, but pretty slick. And again, uh, this is pretty common, I think, for the guys that do lots of builds and they really kind of streamline everything. They just run in a clean symbol line and then they'll cut through those. Um, so I just kind of wanted to show you a little bit of an approach on how somebody uh, can bring about a very, very tight level of integration there when it comes to the cable management. Super nice cable routing that was done on point right there, right? And there you can see that little bit of that accessory, right, where we've got that little panel that it looks like it came with the Hyperion, but it totally did not come with the Hyperion, right? They totally added in that ROD accent in terms of that Hyperion. There you can see, of course, putting in the 4090, the Strix card, uh, as some people call it, the Unicorn card, right? Um, it is a very popular card in terms of, I know a lot of people looking for it. Um, oh, let me go ahead and see right here if... Um, They actually have the inside shot. Let me go see if we have that inside panel shot. I don't know if there's an inside. Yeah, I don't think they had an inside panel shot. I wanted to see if we could show just a little bit of that, but it doesn't look like you have like right here where you can see a little bit more on the inside in there. But overall, I think a really cool build. It's really nice to be able to see that done. And again, yeah, um, tech notes right there is excellent cable management right there. So pretty slick. So that's a pretty sweet build right there. So big thumbs up to Enter PC. Kudos, nicely done. All right, um, let me go ahead and I'm going to bring up my submission form here. And see if I can go ahead and maybe just do one or two builds. So give me one second, guys. Go into our builder spotlight. Let's see what we got right here. Kevin Daly says, I like the Hyperion builds coming in. Yeah, it's been really cool to be able to see it. I, It's always cool. I mean, you know, uh, I think I try to be pretty balanced. I don't show just, uh, you know, of course, Asus chassis right here, you know, like it, but it's been cool to be able to see people do stuff in everything from the Helios to the GT501 to the GT502 to, of course, the Hyperion. But at the same time, you know, always cool to be able to see um, people, you know, put together, um, you know, a range of builds, right? Regardless of whether they're coming from, right? So. All right, uh, let's go here. All right, here we go. Um, let me see here what we've got going on for this one. Oh, okay, yeah, I think this is this is kind of interesting. So let's go ahead and download the images here, guys. Give me one second to download the images here. I guess we'll keep with a little bit of a kind of white theme for this round. And actually, you know what? I'm gonna go with this one first. We're gonna actually go, yeah, we're gonna go with this one first. So this is gonna be, let me actually add a banner right here. This is gonna be from GGF, right? So this is going to be from Stuart, uh, Stuart Talks, right? So for, of course, from GGF right here. And he did actually a really cool build for PAX East. 
Um, and right here, this is, you can see the actual Pro Art build. So I thought this was actually a cool one here to kind of align with what we saw with, of course, the Pro Art based graphics cards, all the cool promos that we have going on right now for the Pro Art series. And so I thought there was a really cool kind of styling that went on here. Uh, Stuart, of course, brings all of his experience and expertise, especially with, you know, um, I think custom water looped configurations, but also a nice attention to detail when it comes to color theory. Um, you know, definitely one of the best out there. Very, very similar, I think, to like Sneff, who's one of my favorites in terms of color theory. Um, but some really cool kind of design points that we can see right here. So cool thing right here is they utilized actually the Pro Art Creator Hub as far as the screen interface to see some of the stat values. This nice little accent part right here, which is in gold and black with the Pro Art, Asus Pro Art right there. But then of course we can take a closer look at the inside. So let's go and actually take a closer look here. So um, I really loved the overall aesthetic right here. So the choice and selection. So we can just see the subtle little bit of the gold outlines that we have right there in terms of the Pro Art board. But then you can see that nice accent of gold where it's not super heavy, not super crazy, but it's nicely implemented in there to give a little bit of that contrasting and kind of feed in with that vibe that the Pro Art series has. And I think it adds a nice little level of a premium vibe to it, right? Um, the selection right here too with the bits power and then you'd be able to see the bits power logo right there in that nice little gold the color choice there on the rgb lighting and then also going transparent with the fluid and the tube run right also i think again perfectly complements the entire look and feel so it's got a really nice level of clean polish to it um, that i think just looks fantastic i love the way that this build turned out and again wouldn't expect anything less uh, from stewart um, and even taking a look at it with no rgb lighting I think it looks fantastic right here. So with even no RGB lighting, you just kind of take a look at it like if it was all darked out and it's still a fantastic looking build, right? Really clean. And I think that's always one of the things I love is I love seeing how a system looks off and looks how a system looks on. Um, the Bits Power block that's also on there, it's one of my favorite blocks that's on the market. It looks really, really clean with it just adding that little bit of transparency, which also complements those runs that we have in there. And of course, uh, the fittings and of course, even the cable combs you can see right there all tie together those gold accents, which I think really come through nicely in terms of the overall look and feel. So we take a closer look, a little bit angled right there. You can also see the Bits Power block. Uh, that block head, um, you can see also again how we've got that little bit, not crazy, driving in the gold, but just a little bit of that. And I love the transparency element here where you can also then see the transparency design that we have in the IO shroud of how it kind of came through a little bit cleaner together, right? Um, Vitor notes that it looks hearts. Yeah, I it really, really came, it came through nicely. I guess this one uh, is no RGB. Actually, it did, it did have, um, so we saw right there. So if we go back right here, you can actually see, um, like again, subtle, not crazy on there, RGB, just right there, uh, you got, a little bit of the accent RGB right there in the Land Lee fans that he has, and then a little bit on the DRAM, right? So it's a very minimal level of RGB, which I really like. I think it speaks really nicely to the design aesthetic for part where it's not crazy. Again, just providing a little bit of a nice, nice soft illumination. Um, and I think it really has a nice kind of complimentary vibe to it, right? Uh, oh, hey, Liquify Mods. Love the branding on the name, man. Kudos, man. Mr. Tonks has really been loving his Bits Power gear lately, and I love to see it. Yeah, um, it's been fantastic. Yeah, a lot of times in the past, he was definitely using, I think, more K. I'm a huge Bits Power fan. I love many of our partners, you know, whether it's Alpha Cool, whether it's Fantex, um, when, you know, Bits Power, um, Optimus. So it's cool to be able to see a range of different type of water cooling solutions that are offered out there. Tech Notes, very, very clean right there. Um, yeah, Mr. Matt Lee, my channel is mostly non-RGB with that in mind. I would agree. Mr. Matt Lee also does a really great job in a lot of his builds to show you the inherent focus on just the, a lot of the devices themselves and what they bring to the table and not necessarily overpowering a build with just lighting, right? Um, but trying to give a balance of that lighting can provide, you know, an accent, but not necessarily be kind of the primary focus. But, you know, that's the cool thing about PCDIY is that, you know, everybody has kind of different choices in terms of what they're looking for. Um, let me see. Hey, Jax, I'm a little bit behind the live stream, but the ProArt X670 version of that motherboard is in my streaming PC build, and I just picked up the ProArt 165 hertz monitor that went on sale from the last PC DIY show. That's an awesome monitor because it's one of the few ProArt monitors that's high refresh rate, but it's really sweet because it's like you get the balance of really great color accuracy, ergonomics, the USB hub, the connectivity, and the high refresh rate. So that's a great 
kind of monitor to be able to pair with that type of system, man. So fantastic, man. Thanks for being Team ProArt, man. I hope everything goes through smoothly getting that all integrated in there. Um, but overall, I think it came through beautifully. Really, of course, the fit and finish. Uh, nice job, of course, with all, of course, the cable routing, the runs. Um, it is definitely a packed to the gills build where it's very tight. But, you know, um, it's beautifully done. In terms of the core hardware, we can see right here, we've got a, um, a C790 Pro Art base board, uh, then just a 12600K, um, 64 gigs of memory in there, a Tough Gaming 4080, which I think is the right choice for water cooling, right? Um, then the John's Bow D41, land the AL120 fans, and then a Seasonic FX 750 watt power supply, and then cable mod pro sleeved cables. And then all the water cooling hardware is coming over from Bits Power. So I'm going to drop that guy, uh, that link in the chat right there for you guys if you guys want to check it out. But a major thumbs up and kudos there to um, Stuart and that build. He killed it. He did a fantastic job with it. Came through really, really nice really, really clean in terms of the kind of just the look and feel with it. So that's another nice one to see. Now rounding it out, we're going to go to an end user build right here. So give me one second to just bring up his images. So give me one second. And let me just make sure I download these guys. So we got one, two. Oh, cool. He added in some different kind of colors to give us some vibes here. Oh, it's interesting. So this is actually like a dual, a dual type of setup. Okay, that's kind of cool. All right, so let me see the name here. Does the build have a name? Okay, so this one's gonna be, let me. This is gonna be, cut. Uh, I'm just gonna put Tough Gaming Build. So this is from Moktar. Hopefully I'm saying your name. I apologize if I'm not saying it correctly, um, but he's got a very cool build. So let's go ahead and take a look at it here. Actually two builds. Uh, so he kind of submitted in two in the same time in the images. So normally we try to only do uh, one build at a time for the feature, but you know, he, he squeezed in two. So we'll, we'll go ahead and we'll work with that. Okay, so let's go and I guess we'll go from, yeah, let's go from this route, okay. I think this works. All right, so here we can see we've got, uh, of course, the system laid out and uh, it's got a really cool vibe to it. I really love the color scheme actually right here with this kind of like a little bit of um, iridescent kind of green, blue, and a little bit of kind of a purple right in there. Uh, purple comes through a little bit more definitely on the dims right here, but it's actually a really cool color vibe right there, this little kind of gradient pattern. Throwback to a little bit of the older series in terms of the ROG Strict Space graphics cards with the and that beautiful ARGB light bar is one of my favorite designs that we ever did on our graphics cards with that full ARGB light bar. Um, so and then a lot of white right here. Now you can also see this in terms of the chassis. This is actually our GT502 chassis. So this is our split chamber design, uh, the white edition model, which is pretty much even white on the internal cables. But he's got a little bit of black in there to give you a little bit of color blocking. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Of course, you could get custom extensions and go white uh, to be able to maybe, you know, have that be a little bit more cohesive with the build, but I don't think it looks bad. Again, he's managed the cables well and it's clean and it's well routed. And overall, definitely you can see the star of the show is all those fans and all that space riding through that vibe. And I think the Prime Series motherboard right there actually has a nice vibe to it right there with the silver slat and giving just a little bit of that reflectivity that you have right there. So that's pretty cool. Eric, the giving some love is like the colorway. Uh, yeah, I definitely agree. I really like the colorway too. And cool here too, he gave you a little bit of a colorway. You went from a kind of that little bit icier kind of cooler vibe. And then here you go to that nice little bit of a warmer color vibe. So you go into some oranges, a little bit of the greens, a little bit of the purples. This one's a little bit warmer, a little bit maybe more spring kind of summery, um, really nice. But I love the contrast right here to go then and tie again the green in a little bit more just on the dims. And I really love seeing that attention to detail when kind of a builder goes and they're not afraid to kind of make it just a little bit different. 
Um, I also love right here, you can see the attention to detail that we did in the GT502 where even those internal cables are white. Where you can see that actually the cables that are not white are from the builder's power supply, right? Because they didn't have a power supply that had native white cables. So take for instance like our Loki or our ROG Strix series power supplies both come with white cables and their white power supplies, right? But overall, really, really nice colors right here and came through really cleanly. Uh, I really like the kind of just the feel and the vibe of the colors and the overall system. So here we can actually see the system kind of lit up in all its glory. And you can actually see the second system right side, right next to it. So this is actually pretty sweet. Um, pretty cool in terms of both the GT502 here in white and another GT502 system in black. So I think those both look really cool. And I actually really like this mix right here where he went again with black. And then he went with the white graphics card, even though the other part of the system is actually black. So really cool. Um, and some people go too many fans. I don't feel there's too many fans. You filled it out. And you know, for some people, that's actually one of the challenges with these split chamber, kind of more open type of chassis where you almost have to kind of fill them out. If not, people feel that they feel a little bit more empty or that space isn't as maximized in terms of its use space. Um, but that's also something I'd love to see creators maybe or builders get a little bit more kind of interested in this. Just because you can put fans there doesn't mean you need to put fans there. Why not be a little bit more creative and think about kind of like a different type of accessory or design to fill in that space. Now, traditionally, of course, it's designed there to put like a radiator, designed to put fans or put uh, different types of items that are kind of for the de default configuration. But um, at least when we get into builders that have a little bit more experience with customization fabrication, that could be kind of something interesting. Like I'd love to see Sneff approach, you know, maybe using this space in a little bit different way, you know, although he's been absolutely doing an amazing job with his custom chassis as of late too. So uh, I totally get that. Um, here you can see we go the other end where we go the black chassis and you can see you got with the black fans you've got the prime and then you got the white graphics card still really clean really nicely done cable management's on point I got nothing, nothing to negate here on both these builds these are really nicely done they would be builds that I would be happy if I didn't myself and very much kind of I think in vain with what I would probably be looking with um, I think I probably though don't know if I would have gone with the white and white combo, but I don't mind it. I like that combo in terms of just giving you a little bit more reflectivity because if these were both black, you would definitely lose on some of that vibrance that you get with the RGB that's lit up, especially in the dark. In the dark, it's gonna pop quite a bit more with these two components giving you some of those reflective surfaces where if it's black, it would actually create a little bit more of a spotlight effect. And here rounds out kind of that one shot that we have there with the uh, the white themed system. And a cool little point there on the GT502 is of course you've got that rear mounting design where uh, compared to something like the O11, you can put the fans or you can put the radiator there in the back, which is kind of cool as well. So it gives you a little bit more flexibility. So overall, very, very cool build. I love the way it came out and I love those colors that we saw in the first one. Um, I don't know, I think I'm gonna leave it on that shot right there and let me bring up his submission form so I can actually read through it so give me one second right here okay and uh, let me go ahead and just bring up that submission form so this is going to be um from Mukhtar. Uh, hopefully i'm pronouncing that correct um and uh you guys can actually check him out on facebook i will drop a link there in his chat uh in the chat to there for there um so did the build have a theme he didn't have a clear theme so he says actually none uh three words to describe the build would be cool tough and build i would definitely agree uh, is this a lot of tough gaming components but there's actually also prime and rg strix that's in there um does the build have a name custom argb tough build yep in terms of the core components, what do we got? We've got a Core i7-13700K, um, a water cooling 360 ARGB AIO, right? Um, then we have got the Prime Z690-P Wi-Fi, the DDR5 version. So that's the DDR5 version versus the DDR4. We make the dash P in most models. 64 gigabytes of RAM in there. Uh, one terabyte uh, for PCIe, NVMe, M.2 SSD from uh, ADATA, XPG. A two terabyte hard drive as well. And then ROG Strix 3080 base graphics cards, the white edition. And then you've also, uh, on both of them. And then ROG Strix power supply. Uh, he's got the 850 watt, not the white edition. He's got the black uh, power supplies in there. And then he has the GT502, where he's got both the GT502 in black and the GT502 in white. Uh, the overall price point for the build was two thousand dollars and that's actually a really nice kind of balanced build if you talk about like price to performance to features i think he's gone for a really good kind of mix where he hasn't gone like super crazy going into one extreme component but he balanced out system that looks good performs well 
has a nice mix of hardware, right? So it's, it's actually a well-balanced build in terms of price to performance. Uh, what aspect is he most proud of is he really loves the actual airflow and uh, he really actually liked the fans and the RGB lighting design. Is there anything that he would change about the build? Um, he would go with custom cables. And so I think here to be able to go uh, with custom cables just to make it be more contiguous with the design and clean it up a little bit. How long did it take him to put together? About uh, eight hours. Um, it's used for 3D rendering. So these systems are used actually for 3D rendering, so for productivity. Uh, favorite ASUS function or feature is uh, he actually loves both. He's a big fan of just ASUS in general. It's his favorite hardware brand. So he's a big fan of pretty much our features, our functions, our designs. So thank you so much, man. Um, overall, you did a great job, man. Fantastic for uh, sharing these on the stream. Very, very nicely done. So uh, let me go ahead and let's see a little bit of notes here. Uh, Mr. Matt Lee throws out some love saying the GT5 I knew t never fails to impress, although turning one into a mimic from Dungeons and Dragons wasn't something I could have foreseen. <laughs> Yeah, you did an awesome job in that. And uh, definitely, we look to showcase uh, not only more of your builds, but more builds from the community in our next PC DIY Builder Spotlight. So guys, thank you guys so much for joining us here on the stream. As always, uh, hopefully you found it interesting, useful, and informative. And as always, hopefully you guys um, have a good Friday night and you guys have a good weekend. As always, take care, take it easy, enjoy the rest of your day. And if you guys are not part of our ASUS PC DIY group, feel free to go ahead and join us there. We've got a link in the description if you're checking us out on YouTube or Facebook. It's an amazing community of over 40,000 members, and we'd love to have you there, man. So with that, take care, take it easy, enjoy the rest of your day, and best of luck with your builds. Take care.